travel for a while. I don't mind. I think my windows. That that's a win. We're live. We're live. What's up, chat? What's up, chat? Uh, I, I don't think I'll be uh, drinking and playing with my emotes on Twitch uh, in, in the future. Because now we have we don't have our emote because I decided to switch it for the, you know, like the beautiful, the beautiful, uh, almost sort of like Redditor type of emote that uh, Nikabo slash, yeah, I think it was Nikabo that built it. Let's uh, give proper credit where uh, credit is due. I'm gonna bring you guys over here. Let's uh, let's get started. Uh, but we will be going emote less. I, I I mean at the same time, like the serpent cool was kind of like not so fresh anymore. So it's good. It's gonna be good to switch it up. Uh, it's just that when you uh, are an affiliate, uh, you have to delete your existing icon before they review it, the new one. So yeah, you're gonna go emote less for a while if you do that. We still have doggo. I mean, I have doggo. <laughs> no one else has doggo, but I have doggo. All right, I'm gonna bring you guys over here. Uh, Let's bring you guys to a different place, uh, because some of you guys were alluding to that. Uh, there was a bit of an existential crisis going on yesterday, uh, just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to talk about that for for a second, not about the crisis part, but just like like what came out of it and stuff like that. So I'm going to bring you guys over here first. Hey, good day. Good day, doggos in, in her couch. I'm in my whatever I'm in. Uh, and look at that, like, what was the existential, uh, let's try that again, existential crisis yesterday. Well, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a while now. It's going to be, it's going to have been like a year in Feb. So we're we're getting close to the year mark. And uh, crisis game agent. 
Oh damn! Right. So of course the the, the one thing that I'm that I'm doing, uh, uh, like we all know, I'm not doing this on Twitch to be like a full time streamer. I, I I think I've always led the charge uh, there to say that. Um, so why do I do it? Well, we can talk about that in another blog post because now there is a blog and a, and a blog post uh, that that kind of talks about that stuff. So, uh, so I think I, I want to spend some time talking about why a programmer would want to stream on Twitch. I think I've had a few programmers here. I know Big J has done a bit of it. I know Francois, of course, has, has done some uh, streaming uh, as a programmer. Uh, I think I, I'd like to give him that to chip in my two cents as to why people would want to do that. But the goal was never to make it like full time on this thing. Um, I think the one thing that a lot of people can agree on is is that we uh, it, it allows me to work on on projects consistently. Mostly, hey, Gooseman's here too. He's got a bunch of programmers. He's lur he be lurking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it allows us to work on our on our projects like with some sort of consistency. It's also it's also very, very fun to have people kind of jump in and you know ask questions and, and do that. Uh, but it's gonna have been one year and I have to start thinking about what I want to do. Like and this is kind of like where the uh, existential crisis came kind of came from. Uh, I have to kind of decide, I have to focus on something, right? So 2017 was kind of cool. Uh, I had a bunch of savings to support myself and, uh, you know, we experimented, we tried a lot of stuff, some, some fun stuff, some stupid stuff, some awesome stuff. Uh, but I feel like, like I'm, I'm sort of putting myself like, like some sort of pressure on myself to, to, to come up with some sort of like more focused plan for 2018. Uh, and this is, this is what led to the questioning yesterday because I was like, you know what, like as much as I enjoy, uh, the Twitch extension game and I think it's a cool project, right? Uh, I, I don't feel like I'm focusing on the right stuff, right? Are you blogging on GitHub? No, no, there is a big, there is blog. I, I didn't add the blog command yet. I, I'm so bad at commands, dude. Uh, there is the blog command, uh, the blog command, blog.serpent.ai. Uh, that's where the stuff is. Um, there's not much yet, but uh, it's, it's, we're gonna populate that a bit, right? So so I, I, like, I, I have to focus on that thing. And the, the way we were uh, going with the, the game, uh, the extension, uh, the Twitch game extensions, I would have been at this thing for probably most of 2018. Uh, and, and my gut was telling me that this is, that this was probably not a mistake, but, but probably not the best use of my time. Uh, so I decided to share my thoughts and, and, and basically make a super scientific straw poll <laughs> and ask, uh, you know, like people in the discord, like what, what they thought about that too. Cause was, I've, been, I've been surprised in the past. I've, I've been super surprised in the past, uh, you know, like I, I thought one way and I was like, oh, I, I'm pretty sure like like chat slash the community thinks that way. And then I, I put it to a vote and it was like the exact opposite. Uh, so in this case, I was like, you know what, like let, let's let's I have my preference. It's fine. Uh, but I'm, I also want to make sure that I'm not going against like like everyone's thing. So we, d we did run this thing. And I think it's pretty overwhelmingly clear uh, that that if you were to just like like stop working on. Uh, the Twitch extension game, uh, it'd be fine, right? Right. How did memes not win? I, I know, man. Like, like memes were supposed to win. I, I, I said it first myself. I was like, you know, how the memes are gonna win, dude. But the memes, like, let's be clear, the memes is more like of an inclus, like an inclusion option slash. I'm a lurker slash. Uh, I just enjoy like having this on my on my monitor, whatever. I or I don't really have an opinion on this. Uh, I wanted to have an option for that, but but I think it's pretty clear though. I think it's pretty clear that that. Like what makes this channel, this channel is, is the Serpent AI framework. That's, that's the only unique content that we can have, right? Because uh, the Serpent AI framework came out of this channel anyways. Um, so I'm happy to see this winning. Personally, that's what I wanted to go back to. I just felt a little like, oh, I started this, this Twitch extension game project and now it's a big commitment. And by the end of 2018, there's a good chance I'm going to have to go back to, uh, to work and probably not stream as much, if not like at all. So I was like, I really want to work on the best thing uh, possible, right? What's up, Splinter? I, I want to really make the most of it, basically. Uh, and, and in my head, the most of it was the Serpent AI framework. And I'm glad that people seem to agree. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop working on the game, but but there's a good chance I'm not going to stream much of it, right? So if I, I, I plan to, I, I work on the game and I get to some place where it's super, super like interest, I, I feel like it would be interesting at least, right? Right. Uh, then maybe I'm going to stream it. Like I'm going to make a special or something and just like stream some game stuff. Uh, and I'm also going to release it at some point, right? So you guys can play it like while you're watching the other stuff. So that's, that's still something that's on. I just don't want to stream that thing. Right. All right. 
what happens at the end of uh, 2018 i don't know yet i don't know yet that's the beautiful part we don't know <laughs> but uh i'm i'm like let's let's be honest like i'm i'm living on i'm living on savings here i'm not making uh a living wage right now so i can't do this forever uh and like i said I, i'd rather make the most of it so that's why i want to work on the on the framework and stuff <laughs> he finally shaves and realizes he needs to <laughs> oh boy move to css full time god damn it do you hate me <laughs> yeah, you hate me that much All right. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you're saying, BJ, until chat makes up the majority of your income. But at the same time, at the same time, like, I mean, like, like in this case, we're lucky because we seem to align in, in, in terms of vision, right? Uh, and, and I don't know. That's the, the one thing. I don't know what, what's in your head, chat, when you watch that stuff. Like, I don't know if you like the Serpent AI stuff or if it's just me that's excited about it, right, in a sense. Uh, that was really hard for me to, to split apart to say like, oh, maybe it's just because I built it and I am enjoying it and, and people are just kind of like following along, hoping for some better days or something. Uh, but it seems like people are enjoying the development of the, the framework. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll work with that. We'll work with that. All right. That's it. Enough, enough of the, uh, the not so, uh, exciting slash the, the slightly depressing stuff. And we're going to go and start working on some stuff. Yeah. We call him Style Boy. <laughs> oh, that's so rough, man. That's so rough. Style Boy. That, that feels wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Calling someone Style Boy is so insulting. Holy shit, dude. Wow. Poor person. Like, it's really rough. All right. So what do we have in plan for today? Uh, I'm going to bring you guys back to the other computer. Uh, we may we may spend uh, some time working on, on upgrading our tools today. Uh... And, and just like showing because i want to i want to definitely like like make uh, i think a video guide to uh getting uh, tensorflow 1.5 release candidate working on arch uh, arch based systems uh, and i think we're going to go through that hell ourselves here we're gonna have some fun with that all right boy <laughs> make it better all right let's bring you guys here all right so i'm in the middle i had to restart because i i updated basically like 500 something packages yesterday on this box so uh, I, I had to restart, so I have to. Uh, we're gonna have to set up again for for Serpent AI, but uh, how to install Arch? That's not what I said. I didn't say how to install Arch. I said I how to get TensorFlow 1.5 release candidate one working because uh, there's a bit of an issue, right? Uh, the issue is the binaries. Okay, so first of all, let's give some context, right? Why 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 do we care about TensorFlow? Uh, well, 1.5 because well, a lot of stuff in the Serpent AI framework uses uh tensorflow right so that's the reason why we care about it uh and and 1.5 is going to be a, a rather major release that's coming up and it's going to support uh well it's it's going to use different versions of cuda uh, and libcu dnn so if you're if you're a cpu tensorflow user you probably don't care except that uh i think that in version 1.5 they're actually shipping with the avx instruction set uh in the binaries that are pre-built uh but but that should be everyone that has uh, support for that yeah i would argue that dude css and design could have prevented the hawaiian missile that that's too real man <laughs> that's too fucking real holy shit uh, <laughs> yeah bad contrast like a hidden button that that's super important <laughs> no design design in css i think i think we like to we people make fun of of the css and 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 not front end, I think, but mostly like CSS, just because we we have a secret admiration for people that do it. Like we don't want to do it ourselves, and then we realize that shit. Some people are actually good at that stuff. Some people want to want to do it. Um, so yes, we show our love a bit in a tough way, but it's definitely some some love under there. Yeah, yeah. I remember someone did a Twitch. Uh, yeah, yeah. That and it. That, I think they actually got it to work, Splinter. I don't remember exactly, but I think they got it to. Yeah, they got it to work. Uh, the real screen? No. If you want to link it, Francois, do it. Do it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. What? Right. Because better them than me, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like exactly. Like you're happy that that you know, like some people. I I I have the biggest respect for people that are able to just do some menial 
tasks. And I'm not saying that CSS, fuck, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying CSS is menial task. I, I was just starting to think about other people. Like I, I was looking at, uh, like, like I was thinking about like garbage, you know, like, like, like a trash, like, like garbage, like garbage people, like men or whatever. I was like, that's actually, they deserve some fucking high pay because someone's got to do it. And uh, not everyone wants to do it. Nice link to which I had fucked it up. You're gone, dude. Yeah. Oh, Puka just lost a, uh, yeah, that's another day off mod because typo. Good job. Good job. All right. So, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know why I'm on, on Keras's page right now. I think I wanted to make sure that, that it was not going to blow up if we use uh, 1.5. So, I'm going to give you the the, uh, the issue and why I would even consider building this from source, like, in my right mind. Uh, the issue is that if you go to your uh, software, uh, you can do this through the command line, but it's just more fun just to do it visually for you guys here. Uh, if you go and look at the, your CUDA stuff, so if you keep your Arch system uh, up to date, which most uh, people, uh, I guess, do. Uh, fuck, it opened it in the wrong, in the wrong browser. I can't see it. Oh, well. No fucking way that it looks like that. <laughs> no, no way, no way. No way that it looks like that. There's, there's no fucking way. It's all like default buttons. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all like default HTML links. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Design is pretty important that way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's that's insane. All right, so CUDA, right? What's the thing? So if you keep your, your Arch system up to date, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to install, if you if you care for it, at least if you've installed it once, uh, it's going to keep this thing up, this baby up to date. Uh, so you're going to be ending up with, you know, like like 9.1 right now, right? So which is which is what I got. Like, this is what I have on my system. I have 9.1. Um, the whole, like, this, this garbage, don't look at it. It, it actually doesn't do anything. Uh, but it's mostly the CUDA package. The other one that I want to look at is, of course, uh, lib. Oops, shit. Oh, I didn't even put my keyboards in the wrong right order. What am I doing? All right, so if we were to look at keyboard, I got to wiggle the cord. Yeah. I wonder how much space you would need to install every official Arch package. Uh, you probably don't have enough. That's the answer. <laughs> All right, so lib CDNN. There's the other one. Uh, and it's just cool that they have it on, on Arch, right? Because uh, I'm going to let it like do its thing. I think it's frozen for some reason. But it's kind of cool that they have it because otherwise it's behind like some sort of like like registration on the NVIDIA website. But but on Arch systems, you can get it uh, pretty easily. I don't know if it's... What's fucking broken right now? Or I think it might just be CUDNN. Yeah, there it is. All right. Uh, so for some reason I seem to have both. Uh, that's that's a problem. I might get rid of the other one, uh, but right now it's on 7.0. So so if you keep your system up to date, you have uh, CUDA 9.1, CUDNN 7.0. If you want to use if you want to use the uh, TensorFlow 1.5, which is which is coming out, right? So if I, I were to go to TensorFlow on on GitHub, Snack right? Is Snack dead? Yes, Snake is definitely dead because I restarted my machine. All right, give me a sec. Give me a sec to restart Snake. I know it's, it's very important stuff. Uh, so let's exit this guy and Tlux. I need to do my services first. Rip Snake. Well, yeah, it's running on this machine. So yeah, it is dead. It's going to take a sec. All right, so let's go to to Redis server here. Uh, I'm getting it. I'm getting pretty good at that stuff. All right, CD Engine next. Uh, that's not the password. Snake, wake up! I wish. I wish saying Snake, wake up would just run a script or something. It doesn't. It doesn't. But I'm not saying it does. I'm not saying it would be wise. Like security. Uh, security wise, I don't think it would be the best thing either. But it would be kind of neat if, we, if chat could wake up Snake. Uh, start. Crossbar, motherfucker, are you are you for real? Uh, let's do uh, I am local crossbar. All right, that's step number one, and then I'm going to do a new window here. 
Give us access to your crown path. Yeah, that's that's definitely gonna work. Uh, okay, so just get a snack. We're gonna do snack. Uh, I know how to do snack. Don't worry. I know snack. All right, so projects Twitch snack. It could definitely be automated. I'm just like not bothered to do it for some reason, because I always think I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna re like you know like reboot that much. What's up, beerless? Yeah. <laughs> I just did a yeah. I just realized it. I was like, fuck. That was that was a perfect yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, IRC bot is one thing that is in. Uh, that would be a Python lib IRC bot. At the same time, I don't think people want to see. I don't think people want to see some, you know, like like script building for to start. But he also, I I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Help, <laughs> help. I don't get it. All right, so that's projects and Twitch Nick again. This one's gonna be the Snick command dispatcher. No, not Twitch. Snack. Uh, bin. Snack command dispatcher, and then I also have to serve uh, front end. Yeah, a script would be kind of nice here. <laughs> it would save me a bit, a bit of time. Uh, but it's also not long to the point where it, I just have to do it, right? So it's not, it's not that bad. Need some lessons in meme, meme a lot. Yeah, okay. Well, chat is is supposed to keep me up to date with that shit. All right, front end, and then I'll do Python m uh, HTTP.server, and I think that's going to be it. And then we can try some snick commands. He protect what he has. I don't know. I, I can't know them all, man. Yeah. Going to set up the, on Tmux stuff to, on stream tonight to force me to finally do it. Yeah, no, Tmux is, is you can learn like a handful of commands and be super, super productive. So it's kind of nice that way. All right, let's see. Snack right. I see snack right. Uh, let's make sure it actually picks it up. It should. The next, uh, yeah, there you go. Thank the books, right? Uh, and snack. If a snack doesn't move, it's probably because it's not. I, I need to give it a little, uh, a little refresh. It's gonna take a second. Yeah, I, I need to give it a refresh, unfortunately. So let's do this. All right, you didn't see much, but it that's better. If Snack doesn't move, it probably gets no. Snack is never dead. Okay, Snack is never dead. Don't say stuff like that. Snack doesn't die. There you go. Snack is moving. All right, thanks. Thanks for that. We uh, we did this, and I was about to talk about TensorFlow, uh, the new version, right? You hate having to do the refresh thing for OBS, especially if it's already in a specific state, right, Gooseman? And then you just restart it. It just like I don't know, it messes with people's, like whatever, like whatever you have going on, it will reset it from from scratch. Yeah. Baking and eating snack. To even share with Doggo. God damn, you guys are being rough right now. If anything, I need I need words of encouragement, not 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 stuff like that. Not like you killed Snake and then feed Doggo. That that's just too rough, man. All right, so uh, if we go here, uh, we're gonna have a, a bunch of fun in the issues. Uh, the one thing I, I want to do is is CUDA uh, nine point one, right? And uh, the fun thing uh, that you'll discover here. Is and because I, I was kind of messing with that. I hate myself like that. I was messing with this yesterday night, like like uh, pretty late into the night. I was like, oh, let me just try to get like TensorFlow uh, 1.5 RC, the, the release candidate, working. Uh, and essentially, uh, I don't think I'll see it in this issue. Uh, maybe this one. Ah, where is it? Of course, of course, I won't be able to find it. Yeah, okay, well, whatever. Like, like this is not the official word, but but still. Uh, we need uh, Doggo Snake. Yeah. Yeah, except that one was a little too hardcore. And, and also not not warranted at all, Puka. Like, I don't know. I know you wanted to test it, but... 
<laughs> I'm also testing my own tools. All right. Uh, so yeah, no, the, the short version is, is right now, it, it actually will only work with CUDA 9.0 and not 9.1. In our system, of course, uh, our system is, is already set up on timeout meets closer to my, absolutely, that's how it, yes. Definitely working in the right direction right now for, for Puka. All right, so right now, like, there's no way, like, like if you are in an Arch system, like, you're already on 9.1, but that's it. Unless you install everything from, from source everywhere, uh, there's no, there's no way at the current point in time, if you work on CUDA, you're, you're, you're on, you're not on 9.1, right? And the problem is it, it, the, the binaries that, that you get, if you do like a pip install TensorFlow GPU, uh, well, that's going to be, well, the R, the RC stuff, that's going to be uh, expecting to see CUDA 9.0 and everything's going to fuck up. So if I were to show you right now, right, uh, if you were to show you right now what it looks like, I can. I could just go here and say, you know what? Like, let's go to projects. Uh, and yeah, let's use let's use this guy, I guess, uh, or just like straight up say, let's not have any environment. I want to show you what it does because I have it installed right now, but it's just. Uh, right. You should experience a ban next. Oh, it's, it's gonna happen. One day Puka's gonna slip. Yeah, valuable experience. <laughs> All right, so if I were to go here, go into my IPython and try to import TensorFlow. Uh, by the way, okay, let, let me try something here. First of all, just trying to show things properly. Uh, if I were to do a pip freeze, uh, you'll see a bunch of shit, right? But the important part is perhaps hidden by my big head. No, not right, no, 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 no. Look at that. TensorFlow GPU, I, I think you see it above my head, right? Uh, TensorFlow GPU 1.50 RC1. So that's my target. That's my goal. It is installed, right? Now, if I go to IPython and try to import, let's do it here. Let's do import TensorFlow as TF. Oh, that doesn't look good, right? <laughs> Normally, that's not what happens when you import packages. Uh, and uh, let me try to buffer it for you, even though no one's giving some 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 buffer bits. Uh, I'm gonna try to buffer it a bit, and and basically you end up with stuff like, hey, look at that, it's looking for 9.0. Uh, in it, so it does detect where my CUDA is. There's an entry in the path or whatever. That's good, uh, but this specifically built, uh, you know, like 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 package or, or binary for TensorFlow is is hard coded to look for 9.0, uh, which kind of means like rip TensorFlow 1.5. Uh, unfortunately. Now, I did try a bunch of uh, funky shit. I did try to simlink my 9.1 uh, static libs to 9.0. Uh, that did not work because it still does the version, right? So it says, okay, cool. I find the files, but they're not checking out with the version. Uh, so, no, there's there's no way to do it. Yeah. How'd the machine learning go, by the way, over the weekend? Uh, well, I, I, I don't, I didn't, we didn't really do a machine learning project per se, but we did work on, uh, on the Serpent AI framework. Uh, we're getting really, really close to having something really good for, uh, the, the player input recording. Uh, if you don't know what that is, is, uh, the, the Serpent AI framework will allow you to record your gameplay, at least keyboard wise for now, cause there's, there's problems with mouse event capturing, uh, but record all your key presses and associate that with frames. Right, so you can record like who you are as as a player, technically, and uh, be able to give that as input to a machine learning model. So we're working on that right now. That's the current feature. It's a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty cool feature, I would say. Uh, it's also pretty intense and pretty difficult to get right. Uh, I think today, after the messing around with TensorFlow like this, we're probably going to spend some time uh, working with that. Uh, trying to try to just like draw out or I'm, I'm definitely going to use the Wacom for this. Like we're going to try to map out like the way it currently works, uh, the way we currently like, like hold all the information for, for the captures and try to refactor it a little bit to include what uh, Anne uh, was, was saying. Right. Yeah. All right. So that that's fucked up. Like there's no way I can do it. So the only uh, way I can get out of this mess is if I build a TensorFlow from from source. And I know that's scary. <laughs> you hear that shit and you're like, fuck, that's, yeah, no, I don't, I'm, that's not something I want to do, right? It's not something I want to do, uh, but you have to do it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy, 
Uh, I'm going to make sure I remove this guy, first of all. And we're literally going to make our Serpent AI, at least my local install here in development, use TensorFlow 1.5, the release candidate. So I'm going to get rid of the old uh, SUDNN. That's okay. Um, now let's make sure that our default CUDA. So I think it's NGCC. I don't know if I can do version on this. Nah. There we go. All right, so CUDA uh, by default right now is release 9.1, so that's good. Uh, at least that, that's the default one it sees on my system. I don't know if there's a way for me to verify the current, uh, you know, the current uh, libsu DNN. Uh, I think there is, but it's it's not exactly easy. Uh, so let's 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 build. I've never done it, and I, I really want to go through this because I believe that in the future, especially on rolling, uh, you know, like rolling release distros, like everything is Arch based. Uh, it's really hard to get, like the packages keep updating themselves and TensorFlow is like, like the, the, the binaries that you're going to get. This is mostly a Linux thing, uh, but you're going to get them uh, like with the wrong versions to, to for the binaries to work, right? Um, so the only way to do machine learning now is to let computer work it out itself based on set parameters aware. Yes, yes, that's, that's, I, I would give this like a, a solid eight out of ten in terms of understanding. <laughs> it, 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 there's there's a few things I, I would I would probably correct in that statement, but yes, yes, mostly uh, the simplest way to get this is that neural networks, like traditionally at least right now, are initialized randomly, uh, and then if you have a big input space and, and, and like a bit mathematical space in general, there's a good chance you're going to end up in in some sort of like non-optimal places for, for, for inputs, visual inputs. And if you, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, like how, how many of you guys understand, uh, is it worthy of a green sword? Everyone's like fucking thirsty for mod. I don't know what's going on. Uh, what's, uh, I, I, like on, on a scale of one to 10, how do you, how, how well do you guys understand learning rates in machine learning? And don't be afraid. You can say fucking zero or minus one if you feel like. It's okay. I, I'm I'm just trying to get a pulse here. Do you understand like what learning rates do? Uh, in uh, like like when we talk about learning rate uh, in machine learning or or nine point eight. God damn. <laughs> God damn. All right. So I think I think Anne will explain it to the class then in that in that case. So let's uh, all welcome Anne uh, to the front. <laughs> to the front. And uh, Anne's going to explain learning rates for people. <laughs> uh, okay, so so I, I saw, I don't think I'm going to find it. I saw a graphic, a visual that explains it that was fucking awesome. Of course, like I, I'm not going to find it again. Uh, but it was really, really good. And, and uh, the analogy that they were using for uh, learning rates, <laughs> square root of minus one. <laughs> uh, You've only been here a couple of times in hard, Hardly's. Yeah, Hardly's doing uh, machine learning stuff, I think, uh, with the Unity's uh, machine learning stuff, I think, I believe. Uh, that's why you got to save book. I don't save and bookmark shit. That's just how I roll, man. I don't, I don't, my bookmarks are empty. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was just joking, but Anne is actually taking me, taking me up on it, which which is perfect, right? Yeah. So if you, the the simplest, like I guess I could try to explain it myself, and it's not gonna be very machine learning, uh, learning e or i s or whatever you want to call that. Uh, let's let's see the learning rate as the minimal amount of of distance you can cover. Let's imagine a 2D plane, for example, right? So it's just a 2D plane. Imagine some sort of like, like I don't know, you could you can think of a chart or something. And let's say there's a point, right? And you uh, you start from the origin, and you want your goal is to get to that point. The learning rate is is pretty much like how how far, how much you're gonna advance every time, right? Uh, to get to that point. So that's that's the that's the step basically, right? Uh, I'm, I'm doing it on purpose so so it's not machine learning with gradients and stuff like that. Right? I'm trying to I'm trying to make it simple to understand. Uh, so that learning rate is is pretty much like the size of the line that you're for for every step for every move that you're gonna make. Now uh, the analogy that people were using, and I think it was a very very cool analogy for uh, for learning rates, 
is the uh, the map of Europe type of thing. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Uh, but let's say you're in a city, because uh, it kind of explains a bit. Uh, it, it'll give me a crucial part to, to, to explain that stuff. Uh, let's say you're, you're, I don't know, you're, you're in France somewhere and you want to go to Germany somewhere, right? So you have two points on that 2D plane. And the only way you can move is, is your learning rate, right? So that's the distance you move. And every time you move that distance, you ask, you ask the locals, right? How do I get to this place? Now they might not know at all, or they might know very well, right? So they might tell you to go somewhere that's totally wrong, or they might tell you something that's directly in line with with the point you're you're looking to go in, in in Germany, right? So, and that's 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 a bit like what happens with these machine learning systems, right? When they experience that stuff, you're pretty much telling them like that's that's good or that's bad, right? So, the bigger your learning rate, right? The 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 more distance you cover, uh, the the more distance you cover. And and every time you ask another local if they even if they know if if your 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 line you're covering is is too big if your distance you're covering your, is too big you you might never make it right because even if people tell you oh yeah it's on, it's in that direction like you're gonna be moving so far that you'll never make it it, it would be awesome if I could draw something if you don't care about that stuff also tell me because I I'm trying to explain something that no one might care about but it's super relevant in this case. I don't have my Kreta, right? All right, let's try to let's try to get that up and running. Now, the first time I run this software is always an issue, so that's that's fun. Oh, not this time. Lovely. I don't know where these things are coming from, but I'll take them. Give me this one. Sweet. No, I think it's gonna be easier to draw. I don't know why I even tried to use my words for this. Like, like I know not everyone's visual, but you'll you'll fucking get it. I promise. Uh, I just need to uh, go full screen mode on this. Uh, am I already full screen mode? Okay, cool. Uh, where's my pen? Is this how you whiteboard online? That, this is how I do it. I use Krita. I use full screen canvas only. I have a uh, super old as fuck tablet, right? gray board <laughs> yes uh, and let's use uh, about five I also want to get rid of this there you go all right cool perfect all right so let's let's do two maps of of Europe that's gonna be fucking disgusting chat it's not even a map of Europe let's just consider two scenarios right drawing time <laughs> yeah it is drawing time it is drawing time all right so let's say let's say you start here right that's your that's your origin you start here and your destination is here right right yeah well that's a simple way to do it i don't know if you're in, i don't remember if you're on linux uh, big j but but try to get the krita krita uh k-r-i-t-a uh you can put it in uh you can put it in full screen canvas mode like this and it's actually pretty useful yeah Oh no, me trying to talk like like is actually pretty horrible. Like I'm not the best at explaining things, uh, like just just true words. But what this is probably going to help. Like so, let's say you have a, uh, let's say you have a a very small. <laughs> my ears. <laughs> that was really loud in my ears for some reason. Miss Gigi, bra. I'm a scary lurker. Goddamn, it did. It was actually scary. So good job. You you nailed it. It was actually like my ears are bleeding right now. I don't know why it's that loud. All right, so let's do a small LR. By the way, if you've never seen this before, my, my handwriting is absolutely horrendous. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, is, it was scary. You nailed it. And let's do like a large uh, LR, right? So LR being a uh, learning rate, right? So let's say I start here uh, and I ask, a, I ask a local and they tell me, yeah, you got to go that way. So that's kind of like the good way. But then the next person tells me, oh, no, you got to go that way to get to this point. All right. So I, 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 I listen. Right. It's always going to be the same thing. And someone might, might tell me, oh, you got to go that way. And oh no, it's actually this way, this way. I'm just going to fucking wing it. Doesn't really matter. Right. But this 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 idea here. 
uh, is is super easy to uh, to. So you might have seen like learning rate, learning rate all over the place with machine learning, and you might have never understood what it was, right? Uh, it's muted on the stream. You mean the alert? Yeah, yeah. I haven't figured out a way because right now I'm listening to music uh, for copyright purposes. I don't want to have the music. Uh, you know, like the music actually like like on there because because YouTube will mute like a fucking eight hour video just for thirty seconds of audio. It's really really great, um, and uh, so the alerts are on my sound card on the PC, which is the same uh, output devices as, as my music. So I mute that thing. Now I I, I I could figure it out, right? All right. So now that, uh, the closer you get here, there's a good chance that you know like people will actually know where you need to go. Uh, so let's say you do this, right? All right. Thanks a lot, YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Really, really amazing. Uh, they have this tool on YouTube, by the way. I don't know if you guys do YouTube at all or not, but they have this tool to remove songs, and it's actually pretty cool, uh, but it doesn't work for long videos, right? So it doesn't work, right? Yeah. Voice banana. You beat voice meter banana. Yes, yes. We, we tried it. We tried it. All right, so this is a small learning rate. So what, what can we notice here? Well, first thing that we can notice with a small learning rate is that we eventually do make it to our destination, right? We do make it to our destination. Uh, but on, one other thing that you might notice is that it, it takes a lot of steps to get there, right? Of course, like in reality, it would be way, way, way more steps to get there. Uh, but, but imagine it as a unit of distance on, on that plane, right? On that plane. Uh, and and the smaller the refinement, like like if we make it even smaller, we could probably like like get even closer to the point, like almost to a perfect degree. But it would it would also take way more uh, instances to get there because we're only moving uh, such a little amount of, of of space on that on that 2D plane every time. Now, what's the problem with a large learning rate? Because because a lot of people are saying, well, if it's learning too slow, right? Well, just just make it learn faster. Okay, so here's the problem with that. The, the problem with that is that the same problem applies here. Yeah, right? The same problem applies. Uh, uh, you're trying to go from point A to B. Uh, but if your, your unit of measurement, for example, is this large, right? And that's the learning rate. That, that would be like having a faster learning rate, right? Right. You're liking this analogy. It's actually pretty good. I, I love it myself. It's not mine. I'm, I'm definitely like readapting. I'm remixing it <laughs> to my own drawings, right? So this is my my unit of, of how far I'm, I'm moving. My, my goal is to get here. If I get here, that's like the perfect, uh, for that specific scenario, like I, I have the perfect output for my input, right? But now I, I can only move by, by this amount of, you know, like, like, I can only cover like every single time I have to cover this amount of distance. So it doesn't matter. So if someone's wrong uh, and for some reason they send me that way like this, right? And then, I don't know, the next person's like a, like not too sure again and I, I'm going like this. Uh, and then we're lucky and we get someone that sort of knows what they're talking about, right? So I'd go like this. And then this is where it gets hairy, right? This is where it gets hairy for the learning rate stuff. Uh, cause how do I get to that point with that distance, right? So yes, we're moving fast, but we're never going to be able to settle on the point. Cause every time I ask someone here, they're going to say, oh yeah, well, you got to know, you got to go that way. Okay, cool. I got to go that way, but now I'm not on the point anymore. And then I ask them, well, you got to go that way. Oh, okay, cool. I got to go that way. Oh, I got to go that way. Right. And we're never going to touch the point. So there's a problem with using larger learning rates like that, right? And the point, the, the, the thing is, you'll start, you might still get in, you know, the general vicinity or not, or not, uh, but you're not going to get the actual output that you desire because it's, it's never going to be able to kind of like settle on it. I don't know if it makes sense. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. Uh, and hopefully you can kind of learn like what, what a learning rate, because if you ever hear that, you'll hear that everywhere, by the way, learning rate. And some people are just like, uh, that don't really like work with machine learning too much. They, they probably just consider it some sort of like a, uh, like hyper parameter that you just tweak. Uh, but there is a way to understand what's going on, right? There is a way to understand what's going on there uh, and why you generally want to keep them smaller. So rule of thumb is you want to keep them small, but not too small, because if it's too small, yeah, it'll be precise. You'll, you'll probably nail it, but the time it'll take you to get there, right? The time it'll take you to get there uh, is going to be ridiculous, 
All right, so time is already an enemy when you're working with neural networks, when you're working with machine learning stuff. Uh, time is definitely an enemy, right? So uh, like, like, yes, if you want to get perfect results, you could definitely like lower that learning rate, but you might spend fucking forever trying to get there. All right, so your goal is to make it small enough so that you can get really, really close to your objective, but not so small that it's going to take forever. That's it. That's it. All right. All right. I'm a little late. Can you tell me what you're making? Okay. So uh, I, I'm not like in the process of making stuff. I'm mostly explaining uh, a, a few concepts, but I am working on the framework like Puka linked. Yeah. You're also uh, only guaranteed to get a local minimum. Exactly. Yeah. It's never going to be perfect, but I'm, I'm trying to say like, I'm basically like, this is, this is what's, this is, this is what I want people to focus on. And I think that the whole like moving by this amount will help. It's not a perfect analogy, uh, but it's definitely better to see it that way, even if it doesn't represent the problem perfectly, uh, than to just assume it's a hyperparameter that you tweak, that you tweak like randomly, right? Because some people do that, unfortunately. They just, they just say, you know what? Let's try with a bigger learning rate. And it's just like, no, okay, well. <laughs> and the reason that we were talking about this in the first place, right? The reason I was talking about this in the first place, I have to remember there was something that chat said that, that got me to think about that. Uh, let me let me go back up. I, mean, I want to see why I talked about that. There is a reason. There is a reason why I talked about it. It's, it's actually like way higher than this. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of why. Okay, shit. It all makes sense now. Why are we recording player input, right? Uh, okay, so the other. Okay, so let's try to get the player input stuff in there. Now that we have the learning rate, uh, how the fuck do I, 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 I want to try to find, like, I, I want to use this, a similar analogy. And I think the, the, the analogy, the similar analogy is that this initial point, right? This initial point that you have here uh, is technically random at the beginning. When you initialize your neural network, this is just for like a, this is just for like a, like a, a sample input for, so let's say like a three pixel by three pixel image. Uh, initially my, 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 my neural network would give this, um, would give this output for, for this graphical input. Uh, so what, what can the player recording type of thing do for us? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, it would, it would probably make it so our point is way closer. Uh, I think if we want to keep, uh, if you want to stick to the same like map analogy, I'm right, just trying to ask like like locals to to direct us towards a point. I think if we have this uh, this player recording thing that we're working on for this uh, next feature, right? If we have that, I think it's just going to make it so the points are closer, right? Uh, and then you have to only work out like like your way from here. So if you use a even if you use like the same learning rate, uh, you're more likely you're more likely to make it like relatively quickly uh to the optimal uh spot versus versus just initializing your your neural network randomly which will put a point randomly on the map anywhere and it could be super far away that's the thing that we don't really show here is that point that random point for that input could be placed super super far away from on on the map and then you have to do you have to traverse this thing with your with your small learning rate like that right so by by recording player input we can make it so instead of having a random point anywhere on that plane we can be relatively in the right vicinity right yeah yeah combining neural nets with reinforcement learning and different sorts of input data makes this analogy a bit confusing yes it does i was trying to stick to the same thing but i don't think it applies that well i don't think it applies that well but it's just like like technically when you when you feed it like some visual data right so this is just like a three by three matrix uh, it could also be a three by three by three if it's color, right? Uh, when you feed it something, initially, right, your weights uh, and, 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 and gradients and stuff like that, they get initialized randomly. And, and randomly could mean like super far away from the optimal outcome for this very specific input. Uh, so the goal with this thing that, that we're building, the player input, is just trying to make it still probably not perfect. There's still some room to optimize it, right? But, but at least try to get closer, right? Get a better approximation to start with. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Right? Beardless. So it's not, it's not, it's not purely, uh, it's not purely, purely like in the dark. Right? We're, we're, we're just making a better approximation of where it should be. Uh, and, and then, uh, well, you know, the algorithm is still free. Uh, and then the, the problem is that with my explanation here is that there's a sequence of frames, right? Uh, th there's a bunch of shit. And then uh, as we get the frames, the convolutional layers, they actually like adapt. Uh, there's a lot missing from this analogy, but it, like at, at least like trying to say like, there's a good chance we're going to position that point uh, better. Right, we're just just a little more in a, in a more uh, we're in a closer fashion, right? Uh, so maybe maybe my, my my one month of training can turn into I don't know like a week or two weeks or something like that, right? So we're we're trying to make it so it's optimal. Uh, the other benefit, uh, presumably, uh, the weights are just initialized randomly. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely, no, no, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we'll 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 have enough data to try to like basically yeah okay so yeah yeah okay what Ed is saying is interesting yeah so we're still gonna initialize randomly and then train on it right train on it uh, so we're we're positioning this guy so we don't get it for free we have to train on it uh, and then at the end of that training it, we we'll get this guy and say you know what like for this specific input like it, it would be about here even though in reality the perfect in, like the perfect output would be here and then if we keep doing uh, the reinforcement learning at that point, then it, it might eventually like inch it, its way like like towards that, right? So that that first step is still random. Uh, are you saying that for the training time? Uh, and I'm not sure I understand exactly. Anyways, I think we spent enough time there. Uh, the whole point of this was explaining why perhaps we would want to do player recording. Now, there's a simpler way also, uh, sim sim way simpler reason why we would want to do that stuff. Uh, and the simpler reason is just like we, you, you might not care about reinforcement learning at all. You might just want to make a like a machine learning model that's static, that's a copy of uh, you know like like how you play. And if you think that's useless, well, think again because uh, you might have seen like the the GTA stuff that Sandex has done, and that was mostly done. That was mostly based on player recording. Uh, you might have seen what uh, Seth Bling has done with Mario Kart. So not the Mario thing, but Mario Kart recently. That was also him showing the model how it's played. So these things are not useless, right? They don't have to be reinforcement learning. You can still do cool projects with that stuff. Uh, but if you really want to go uh, the extra mile and do reinforcement learning, then then we can still do it. We can still do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you only use player inputs at training time. Yes, yes. But there's an explore like like the reinforcement learning part. The uh, end. There's a uh, there's an exploration policy that will use a lot of randomness. All right, Let, let's remember that. Uh, so if I use the player inputs, uh, that's that's like way better training material or data than using the exploration policy. So I'm not going to use the exploration policy, right? I'm just going to feed it all my data uh, to get to, to that point uh, right here, right? This guy to get here. Uh, so no exploration policy, no going in random directions. I'm just going to go like, I'm going to gun like straight for this guy. And then, and then eventually like, we'll just restart the experiment, but this time we'll, we'll drive it with an exploration policy. And then this, th and then this guy might, might just like go all in all sorts of directions, but hopefully we'll, we'll settle around that point. All right. Uh, so I'm skipping the exploration policy. I'm, I'm skipping the randomness normally with, with reinforcement learning, your agent needs to explore its environment. It needs to try shit. And sadly, people mostly use randomness, not because they're dumb, but because it's the best we got, basically, right? Uh, but but at least I'm I'm gonna position my thing. Uh, so instead of just like going, like I said, like in all sorts of directions, and trust me, it's way more complex than what you see here. Like it's it's actually way uh, like a, a, an enormous amount of steps to get there. And we're able to kind of just like take a shortcut. Uh, to that point. And then, of course, here it's going to use the exploration policy uh, and might do all sorts of random shit, but hopefully settle around this uh, at some point. Right. I don't know if it makes sense. Like, like we can always, like, if you have questions about that stuff, you can either ask here or you can always DM me on Discord if you want to talk about that sort of stuff. Uh, I might not be the best person to explain it, but I feel like I got a decent, decent grasp of it. I think it's mostly like my explanations that are not like ideal. 
uh, in this case. But hopefully, if you just understand the analogy that we made for learning rate, that's already a good thing. That's already a takeaway from 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 today's uh, stream. So it's not that bad. All right. But uh, no, we were actually focusing on even more fun stuff, which was uh, trying to get <laughs> trying to install TensorFlow 1.5 with with CUDA uh, 9.9.1. 9 I can't speak. All right, so 9.1, uh, CUDA 9.1. Uh, you can use it, all right? So it's not that it's not compatible. It's that the binaries that got, that are, that are kind of like pre-compiled that are shipping with uh, that that 1.50 RC1 of TensorFlow, they're expecting 9.0. But if you build it from source, uh, you you definitely can use uh, CUDA 9.1. So I think that's the way we're going to we're gonna go and that's what we're going to do. Uh, so we already have like most of that shit done, right? So we don't like these steps here. I found this this article, perhaps I could share uh that in chat uh, i won't be able to because i'm not logged in fuck uh, but yeah we can sp skip most of that and then, then we'll we'll focus on on this part here and then building it from source apparently it's not that bad they ask you questions so kind of like like serpent setup does uh it's going to ask you a bunch of questions like that and it's going to ask you for your Python interpreter. So I like the goal why I'm doing this today is not because it's the most fascinating thing, but I want to go through it because I want to make either a uh, a video from that on 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 YouTube or uh, perhaps like a blog post uh, just to show how you can get working with TensorFlow 1.5 RC uh, if you're on an Arch base uh, Linux system, right? Uh, so we're gonna go, we're gonna start working on that. Uh, I think I have to start at step ten. Uh, if you guys do, you, you really think like I, I could take a second to try to get you the link if if you think it's relevant. Um, let me try to get it. You can probably see it from see it from uh, my URL bar, but it's it's gonna be a pain in the ass too. I'm gonna get it for you. Now you'll notice that the instructions are for. TensorFlow 1.4, but they're actually the same thing. Oh, Google is just uh, Google is just like fucking me over right now. <laughs> I entered all the keywords that 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 kind of show up there, and and they just don't know. They just don't care. Oh well, I tried. I I did try. Can't say I didn't try. All right, guys, I'm going to take a, a small break, get a, another coffee in because it's still kind of slash sort of early for me. I need to wake up still. I'm going to get a little coffee, going to take a, a slight break. Then we're going to install this guy. And once we're done installing TensorFlow, hopefully it's going to go like sort of smoothly. Uh, I'm going to make it work with Serpent AI. And we're going to take some time to go over the logic of the player capture, uh, input capture, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna work. We're gonna do that. So just give me a sec. I'll be back. I just need to make that coffee and uh, stretch a bit. I'll be back. Just give me a sec.
All right, we're back. Whew. Yeah, synergy. Yeah, no, that, people have talked about that. It it just doesn't happen enough. I would say that 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 I ever considered it. Uh, hey, dope. What's up? Welcome back, dude. Just in time for the the amazing the amazing adventure that we're we're gonna go on uh, right now. We're gonna try to build TensorFlow from from source. I know, scary shit. Uh, so it says that uh, I, I will require lib. Uh, I don't know what that that is like. Cup T, cup T I, and uh, basil, 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 basil. Right, and then and then we can start working on that. Now there's a tricky thing, and I'm gonna have to. We don't use System Python. Uh, there's a few things we could do. We could build it on System Python and then copy uh, the folder inside of our site packages. Uh, that would likely work. So my goal right now is to get TensorFlow. Let's try to get that in here. My goal right now is to get TensorFlow. Can't you just install an older Arch package or something? No, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. No, Arch doesn't maintain. It doesn't keep its old packages around. It doesn't install like it doesn't keep its older packages around. Uh, it's also probably better to do it from source, anyways. All right. So uh, it, right now, my goal is to do uh, import TensorFlow uh, STF and get that work in. All right. So instead of do, of getting whatever this is right now. We want to. We're gonna get something clean and, and and get it working, right? Should I do it? <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> I feel like some people's uh, opinion of the the blockchain stuff might have somehow switched like overnight. Yeah. 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 You should absolutely. Yeah. 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 Exactly. If it's in your cache, right, uh, and it works. Uh, so you can you can always go and look at your your cached packages for your Arch uh, distro, but if it's not there, it's 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 gone, it's gone, it's back. No, of course it's gonna be back. It's, it's gonna be back. It's just like a couple of people like panic, mass sell, and uh, yeah. Yeah, you can kind of reverse. That's the cool thing. But it, but that would reverse your entire like Klaus, correct me if I'm wrong. But that that would likely reverse your entire system to that point in time, like in terms of packages and libraries, not just for that one package. Uh, basically, it would set a point in time for the packages. But and and while you may be able to install your own, uh, the one that you desire, it would also set that point in time for the other packages. So if you install something else, it would use no, no, no. But it would it would use. I mean, the list itself would would be it's like a cursor at that point in time. Uh, so you'd have to move it forward again. Uh, maybe I just don't get it. Like I'm not a I'm not a big like arch person. I I like part of me wants to build it from scratch. All right, so hate me all you want, chat. I wanna I wanna say I've done it. I don't think it's that bad to be honest. All right, so let's try to get that lib uh, cup t i cup t whatever that is. Let's try to get that in. See it like Python too. Why do you have to go there? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can have it side by side. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I get it. I get it. Uh, can we do lib cup ti? Is that gonna be a thing? Oh, that doesn't look really good. I don't think it's gonna work. I don't think it's that bad. Remember that sentence? Yes, I know. It's gonna it's gonna take me like two days to do it. Come on, wake up. You can do it. No, you're not. You're not even gonna. Tr no, what's going on with that piece of shit? No, we don't. No, okay. Came into the arms of the tree. That's a lot of people. That's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it per se. It's just that that eventually you have to move on. It's not that it's not functional, and I think that's why a lot of people kept to it. What's up, Commonus? All right, so apparently it's not there. Uh, whatever, dude. I'm not gonna sweat it. See me sweating? No, I'm not sweating. I'm gonna assume it's gonna work. Um, I don't know why it's a. It's extras for CUDA.
Extras for CUDA, interesting. Let's try to find our, our CUDA directory. I think it's opt, uh, is it CUDA? Yeah, it is opt CUDA. Do you have any extras? Yes, we do. It's already there, see? Uh, you might not see it, it's, it's that way, that way. <laughs> I think we already have it. And then uh, Basil, Basil, I don't know, how you say it, chat? Let's try to see if you have that. that. That apparently is a Java thing. I don't know why we would have that. No, see that we don't have. That seems to be like a build thing. Uh, we'll, we'll fetch that. And uh, this tutorial was using this guy, so let's use this. All right, so correct, reproducible, and fast builds for everyone is, is, the, uh, is the tagline. Uh, I, I guess we'll see uh, what that does later. And then you talk about like Python packages. We're not going to really care about that. It's fine. Uh, TensorFlow requires NumPy. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. I don't even know why it needs NumPy. That's kind of interesting. You'd assume that it... No, why, why does it need NumPy? Question, like why, do, why would TensorFlow need NumPy? I thought it was representing its own... Is it for, maybe it's for like some base uh, base types and stuff like that. All right, so then they're like configure. Um, everything loves NumPy nowadays. No, it does. Everything does, but but at the same time, TensorFlow is kind of technically like something totally different. You know, like totally, totally like it's it's almost like its own NumPy in a sense. It just doesn't really have a like when you work with TensorFlow, you're technically like working with tensors like matrices, kind of like the same way you would work. Uh, with NumPy for interfaces, yeah, maybe, maybe. I think it's using it might it might be using like a, a very very small subset of NumPy, perhaps. Right. So let's do it from source land. They're, they're saying like get it from there from the archives on GitHub. The instructions here uh, that that N posted in in chat, like if you went to that website, they talk about one for uh, for one, but you can definitely figure out what the link is for one five zero RC one, which we will do. Right. Uh, so we should be able to look at releases on GitHub. By the way, that's something a lot of, like like people don't look at on on GitHub sometimes. Like it's because it's kind of hidden in plain sight. But there's definitely a releases thing. So sometimes uh, you find something cool on on GitHub, and you're like, oh, I got a clone and I got a build and whatever. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Right? Sometimes sometimes there are binaries in that section. Uh, you could look at that. Yeah, exactly. It has to implement its own vector map. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. it, it yeah. but, but keep in mind, it also works on CPU, though. Yeah. That number of commit, I didn't see it. Dear fucking God. <laughs> 27,000 commit. Look at us. We're, we're babies. Like, we're literal babies compared to that. Fuck, I feel, I feel bad now. Look at Serpent AI with its... 165 commits. Granted, I don't make small commits. I'm, I'm an idiot in that sense. I like to make like huge commits because I work on this thing pretty much alone. But but still, wow, insane. All right, so look, uh, look at the releases. Uh, I just want to get the URL from this. That's it. Uh, they, they're probably working with the, uh, oh, they're working with the zip. All right, so let's get the zip. That's 1.50 RC1. Uh, I only commit on major releases. <laughs> uh, see Twitch's Go framework? Yeah, uh, what was it? Like, uh, shit. I forgot. There's a name. Twerp? Twerp? <laughs> Twerp? Was it Twerp? The Go, the Go thing? The Go RPC framework that uh, Twitch released? Apparently it looks good. Uh, I don't do enough Go to try that stuff, though. If you like go, you might, might yeah, twerp. Yeah, I think it's twerp. It actually got a decent uh, reception, right? So I think I think it's worth investigating if you're into go and you do a lot of go. I think it's it might be fun if you do like 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 API slash RPC glitch, <laughs> glitch. Nice. I think we should have they should have put François in charge of the in charge of the naming. Yeah. Yeah, Gwitch. <laughs> or G Witch. I don't know. Gwitch. I, I'm just going to keep saying Gwitch because I think it's fucking hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, I have a folder here for sources. So let's go there. And I'm just going to do like a 
W get ah fuck. I'm gonna split the window in two so you guys can see it. How about that? Fucking hell. Like this. Otherwise you won't see it. It's my face gonna be in the in the way always. Alright, so I'm getting uh I'm doing W get on, in my sources directory. I'm doing TensorFlow, TensorFlow Archive 150RC1. Let's get that. Yeah. Yeah. Twerp is a dance. Interesting. Yeah. What where go? Uh yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh dope with the, the link. Dope with the link. Alright, so let's uh, see what we have here. Uh I have a bunch of shit. I have a Spectre meltdown checker. Nice. You guys should also do that in case you're not uh fully uh well covered on that front. And apparently it named it V5. Good good good, good fucking job. Alright, so we're gonna do unzip v hopefully it's gonna do it in a separate directory it always depends on how these things are are, are built no i think it's gonna make a there like an actual directory here twerp dance <laughs> damn all right now we have our tensorflow one uh five rc1 once I go in there and I have the proper tools, I believe I can we can build it. So we're gonna start by configuring it. Uh, they actually have a pretty nice like you might have used configure before with, with Linux packages. Like everyone's kind of done it by following instructions, uh, and usually it just does everything on itself, but on its own. But this guy I think has a lot of uh, a lot of cool like like uh, customizations you can do, which is which is what configure is is you know, like it is, is meant to be. So I think in most cases when you use conf the, the configure scripts with, with sources that you get for Linux, like it actually will check stuff on your system and based on what's there, it might make decisions about the compilation. Uh, but in this case, it will do that, but it would also, it would also, uh, it would also ask you questions, right? The woman is required to request it to pay. Nice. Good job, Twitch. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens. I've never done that. You have uh, Basil or Basil, whatever, uh, 0 0.9 on git install. Cool. So it likes it. Uh, please specify the location of Python. All right. So this is this is interesting. Now it's detected. It's detected my current crossbar uh, environment. But I think I'm going to build it against my 363. Uh, this is why, by the way, there's going to be like a blog post slash like video or whatever, because this is not necessarily like simple stuff. Uh, if you're on like like Ubuntu or stuff like that, it's it's probably like easier to get CUDA 9.0. Uh, it's it's mostly an issue for rolling release like like uh, distros. What, what I'm going through right now. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it to use my 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 actual 363 install. That's still a PyM type of thing. Oh, it's not gonna auto complete. It. For good time, no typos allowed. All right, so it's still in versions, but it's three point six point three, and then we'll do bin Python. So this is not this is not the virtual environment uh, I want to use for that TensorFlow thing. However, I can still move the TensorFlow uh, entry in my site packages for my base Python. I can still copy that in the site packages of another virtual LAN. All right, so that's still gonna work out. It's still gonna work out that way. So let's do this. This should be valid. Uh, it should be home serpent pym versions 363 bin python let's try that uh please input the desired python library path i think that's fine and then uh, there was a bunch of uh there was a bunch of like like things that you should basically we should say yes to everything until we get to xla the just in time shit Let's try that. Why is there Google Cloud Platform support? Whatever, dude. I don't think I need that, but uh, Hadoop file system support. That's interesting. Amazon files. Yes. And then I, it was saying no to this. No. I'm just going to follow this guide for now. Fuck it. Interesting. Now they have some uh, OpenCL stuff. I don't know if it's a new thing in uh, 1.5. I don't think it's there yet, but uh, let's keep in mind that in the near future, we, you may be able to use some, some AMD cards. 
uh, with uh, with stuff like TensorFlow. Uh, okay, so I think that's a no still. TensorFlow with CUDA support, yes. All right, so that's a no, that's a yes. Please specify, uh, and this is this is the key part, right? This is the key part because it defaults to 9.0. So the the let's say the, the binaries that you would get from from the site, uh, they are actually built with these options. All these defaults, basically, they're they're kind of like built in. So whatever is default and configure is what you get when you when you get the the, the pre built uh, binary for TensorFlow. And you can see here it actually. Uh, defaults to 9.0. This is the source of my issue. Uh, I do have CUDA 9.1. Uh, you'd think like it's a minor version. What what's the worst that could happen? Well, technically, it 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 actually links to the static libraries uh, with the 9.0 inside of the binary for for TensorFlow. So yes, it could do a lot of damage. It's not that 9.1 is not compatible. Uh, I'm sure they have some some you know like some kinks to work to work out with 9.1 versus 9.0. Uh, but the, the biggest issue is that they actually link uh, to the static library, like like by name, using the 9.0. Uh, but we can fix it here that way. Specify the location where CUDA toolkit is installed. It should be user local CUDA. That is wrong. In our case, it is... What was it? Fuck. We had it. We had it earlier. Was it like... Uh, it was definitely not user lib. What was it again? opt cuda yeah it was opt cuda so uh yeah we gotta get that right so opt cuda i think that's that's fine all right didn't find it there <laughs> what's up lectin we're, we're having a bunch of fun right now we're trying to install like tensorflow 1.50 release candidate one uh from source now I didn't find uh it didn't find libcudart so 9.1 in optcuda. How is how is that even possible? Let's uh see what's inside of there. Let's see what's inside of optcuda. Then was looking for lib64, that's fine. Uh Seems like a lie, man. <laughs> Getting some good old uh, Linux command edu right now. <laughs> Damn. Well, it's not. It's not that. But fuck, man. It is there. Lib. You, you see it there on the left, right? Like, like right there. Libcudart so nine point one is there, but then it says cannot be found. Optcuda lib sixty four. Libcudart. So nine, it's it's lying to my face right now. It's it's actually lying to my face. Unless I had the, uh, unless I had that accented character there by accident, I don't know, because I, I do see like a this here. I don't know if it's because of that. I should say nine point one again. And then do opt. Trying to get it right. It's just weird, man. Because it's there. Oh, yeah. No, it worked. Okay, so there was uh, some garbage input for some reason. Uh, okay, so CUDNN, leave empty for default 7.0. I'm pretty sure that one is fine. Uh, specify the location. Uh, that should be it. Okay, please specify a list of common separated CUDA compute cap uh, capabilities. Uh... 5.2 uh compute capabilities in cuda that's it's almost like a version type of thing uh i don't know what they have you do default i guess we'll do default 5.2 that's fine uh you have to make sure that your card is able to deliver that compute capability that's the only thing uh so hopefully my gtx 980 uh in this machine because it's an older machine uh, can do that i don't know if i can look at GTX 980 compute. If if you're super familiar with CUDA and chat, like, and you wanna, you wanna like like give me a hint here. I'll I'll take it. I wanna know like what's if it's enough for my card. And I did see some stuff here, right? And this is exactly what I'm looking for. I don't know if I have to reveal any sort of uh, 
menu here. So that's definitely a CUDA, uh, not a Quadro, G-Force. Uh, let's go to, it is 5.2. So that's the limit. That's the limit. Now you can still find this on, on NVIDIA's website. Uh, but the next version that would default, for example, to, I don't know, like a bigger, like a 6.1, uh, I would have to compile it to use 5.2 and not 6.1 just because my card does not support above that. Now on my other box, I'm fine. I have a GTX like 1080 Ti. Uh, so I'd be, I'd be able to use 6.1, right? So it's important to get it right. The default here is 5.2. I don't know if it's the default because it found my card and, and established it that way, or it's just like the point where they're at right now. So I don't know. But 5.2 in the as default is fine. Uh, do you want to use? Uh, can I ask how much v, GPU VRAM you have? Like it depends on the the box. So that 980 and is is definitely not that big. Uh, I think it's like four gigs. Uh, but on my other box, I have the 1080 uh, Ti that has like 11 gigs or 12. I don't remember. I think it's 11. And so there's a big, big, big difference. Uh, you want to use the C Lang? I, I guess is what you have to do. No, okay, no, you don't want to use C-Lang. Okay, cool. And it, it's going to use GCC then. All right, so no. I'm pretty sure that's fine. And then MPI. And... And then you use the default. So it's like no, and then the default here. Android builds, I guess, I guess we don't need that. Configuration finished. All right, that's number one. Build TensorFlow using Basil. I've never used Basil before, so let's see what's up with that. Uh, and they talk about, I don't say a little, like, let me see if I can zoom in. I don't think you guys want to read, but just in case, I, that's a little too much. Fuck, it's lagging. <laughs> All right, let's do this one. Uh, they say do following. Okay, great, great English right there. Uh, create simulate link. Uh, okay. Apparently we have. Okay. I, I like to skim. I'm sure you guys are like that, but it doesn't look like this block of text is something that's skimmable. <laughs> so I guess I guess we're going to have to go through it. Uh, they want me to, to sim link a math functions uh, HPP. inside of from CUDA CRT to CUDA include. Interesting. If it says the file already exi exists, wow, that person needs to do some sp spell check slash editing on their blog post. Man. All right, if it says file, just copy paste all the commands. Well, yes, like we've all been there and I do it like like I, I more than I'd like to, and I care to admit, I, I like to do it. Like, but I feel like this, like if I do this wrong, all right, so that's not even my path to CUDA, but there's the include CRT uh, math functions HPP. So I guess I could get that. Uh, that was an article to use uh, CUDA 9.0 with TensorFlow 1.4. So I'm assuming that this file would be there. The file they're requesting, requesting in this case. Uh, so let's say I, I do an LSA LA on uh, opt CUDA. And then the rest, right? Include CRT map functions. And then I don't want to do the HPP thing. I want to see if it's there. Yeah, map functions, HPP, cool. It's there. Uh, and then we have to verify it actually is in include too. And if it is, we don't need to do anything. So let's do. Yeah, it is. Oh no, the HPP is not there. I think that's the one uh, math functions dot h is there, but not the HPP. Okay, so that's what they want to do. They want to, they want to, they want me to sim link that stuff. Uh, we can do it. So I'll just do sudo lns, right? So we're just gonna sim link. What's the first thing in in sim linking? That's the uh, it's the actual, uh, I guess, source file that you could call it. Uh, so let's do. In my case, at least, and if you're on Antergos or, or Arch, most likely you'll have it at the same spot. Libcuda include CRT, right? 
Greetings, friends of Heather Files. Yeah, we're trying to build like TensorFlow from from source to support uh, CUDA 9.1. Uh, because in my in my rolling release distro, like I, I have no choice. Like like pretty much my CUDA that I have right now is 9.1, and the binaries that they're passing for uh, TensorFlow 1.50 RC1, well they they expect CUDA 9.0. Uh, so the way to get around that is to build it yourself. Which as you guys can see, and this is kind of why I wanted to do this, not because it's fascinating and. Uh, will will give you some some oh my god moments that you want to clip or anything, but just to show you that it's not that intimidating uh, to build your own TensorFlow, because I feel like like a lot of people would just tap out like oh build my own TensorFlow fuck that shit right, but it's not that bad. It's really not that bad, right? Uh, right. So we're gonna make a uh, it should be the HPP here, uh, and then uh, the the new file the link that we want to create that's gonna be an opt uh, CUDA include <clears throat> sorry and then we'll do the map uh, functions but it's going to be the HPP like this it's going to ask me for my password that's fine and we should be good all right that's good uh the next step in the process uh, to install tensorflow gpu version it will be to build tensorflow uh, using basil the process takes a fairly long time we'll, we'll have to work on some other stuff then in that case um to build a pip package for TensorFlow with CPU only support, uh, we don't give a shit about that. All right, we are building uh, with GPU support, so do the following. So do follow. <laughs> they, they, they're missing words. They're eating words like everywhere. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Basil build. Okay, this one I think we're gonna just like copy paste like straight up. Peace out. <laughs> It may take three to four hours or even more. That's, yeah, okay, we're gonna do some other stuff. That's good, but at least we're gonna start the build. How about that? <laughs> oh, damn. That's, that sucks. Okay, let's try to get that in there. So, Basil build, config op, config CUDA. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And then there's a dash dash. I don't think that's correct. That's just because they, it's probably because they broke the line. Where's this one coming from? Is it because they broke the line or is it actually what you need to do? I think it, it, it feels like a path. Yeah. Yeah, no fate for your hardware. No, I think if they warn you that it's going to take, like people that do stuff with TensorFlow and, and do stuff with like neural nets, they have good machines. Uh, so I, I think that three to four hours, there's a good chance it's going to be pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing it's compiling this the C++ code with with specific like sets of instructions that that makes it not optimized. That's going to make it take this long. Uh it depends on like, you know, like compiling C++ code depending it, there's a lot of stuff that can affect like the speed. Uh it's not the size of the the source necessarily, right? Uh it could be that they're using a lot of dynamic like 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 stuff, right? So the point like like the actual like compiler has to do a lot of work. I'm gonna try it like this, but this is awfully confusing because they're breaking. See, they're doing this thing, the slash slash. I don't know if this is there. This is garbage, man. I'm gonna leave it as slash slash, but who the fuck knows. All right, let's do that. Let's see. And now we wait four hours together, chat. We're gonna look at it go. Quality content. All right, let's see what's up. <laughs> Uh, and what we are building behind the scenes, right? Yeah. What we're building behind the scenes is is really a pip package that's going to be using a. So basically, we're compiling we're compiling TensorFlow. Like we're probably just building like one big binary uh, for TensorFlow, and then it's going to also generate a pip package uh, to to leverage that like the appropriate pip package to to target like like to actually use that binary file for tensorflow right All right no we're not going to watch it i'm just fucking kidding i, I just want to make sure that it's actually like like starting fine and uh <sighs> i have to be careful with my words cuz the second i say like working okay working fine uh that causes crashes 
so that's that's not fun. Uh, what's up? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, all right, so C++ compilation of rule, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, failed. I guess it's because we're missing a, a dependency, maybe? It's going to be hard to see. But it's talking about cross-tool wrapper drivers, not GCC. All right. Fuck is this? Maybe the conclusion is gonna be like we don't want to build our own TensorFlow. I don't know. I was like, I was gonna show like chat that it was that it was not that bad, uh, but <laughs> uh, that double slash is fucking with me. You and me both. You and me both, friend. Yes, I don't like it either. But it's a rule. Uh, it's parsed in as a string, not as a path. So it could be anything. Um, But then it doesn't actually build it, and this is where we're kind of left on our own. <laughs> this is where we're like the nice, the nicely written blog article just like like fucks us over, and we're just like, oh, okay, nice. Now what? Um, interesting. All right, we could use verbose failures. Uh, you have to do it with sudo, maybe. Good point. Perhaps, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. But the file doesn't exist. Well. Let's try it with that, but I don't think it's, it, I don't think that's what it is. It could be. It could be that it doesn't even see the file because it doesn't have root, right? So let's let, let's at least get that, that one out of the way. And then it doesn't like, uh, cannot open file external local config. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely Google for that one after. I'm expecting it to crash again, by the way, just saying. Like, I don't think that that changes anything, but it's also possible it, does, it doesn't see the file because it doesn't have like, like read permissions. I think we're about to crash. Yeah, same thing, same thing. And it's Python that's looking for that, weirdly enough. It's Python that's looking for this. It says Python can't open and this is where this is where it gets fun. This is where the the see everything's fine it turns to like oh my god, <laughs> save us from this. Time to Google. Yeah, no, it says. See, this guy, this guy's, uh, this this guy here saying uh, something uh, along that those lines. It's saying, if anyone's having this issue, I solved it by making sure that shell, uh, the shell always points to system Python binary. Some Python utility tools like pyenv co cause confusion to Basil. Hey, guess guess who's the sucker that's using pyenv? <laughs> Uh, so I might have to build it against system Python instead. So I might have to reconfigure my my TensorFlow uh, and try to see where, first of all, where's my, my system Python? Because I'm pretty sure I have it. Uh, we could look at that using our or visual, I guess, like my like GUI uh, version of Pac-Man. So let's say, uh, where's Python 3.6? I'm sure you have it somewhere. Python 3641. So it is installed as a system package. So in interesting thing to note, and it's it's a good thing to learn. Uh, PyM does cause it to be like super confused. So let's not let's not use uh, a Python environment that's that's inside of PyM. Uh, and now I need to discover where this Python uh, system Python gets installed. Uh, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, I don't know if you guys know the best way. I'm not a pro like like Linux uh, user necessarily for that sort of stuff. I, I I would tend to try to find stuff and just find something that's named like Python and see what directories come up. But that seems like not the like the best way to zero in uh, on that sort of stuff. Uh, 
it's definitely not opt because uh opt seems to be uh for the most part where uh the or stuff like the user uh, the arch user repository stuff gets installed but it's not where the other system packages uh, it could be in user lib could be there oh boy four thousand no 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 it's not list out four thousand uh any python here python 36 in user lib worth the try which python 36 that's definitely going to show uh, oh python 36 no it's going to show that's the thing crossbow uh now where is and all that stuff that's going to that's like this is going to show the pi m stuff right so i i think it's here i'm pretty goddamn sure it's here it's user lib python 3.6 uh and in there we should have a site uh, site packages yeah okay so let's reconfigure let's reconfigure tensorflow using that stuff this time we can go a little faster because we've done it once all right so let's do this again okay so we're going to use user lib python what was it 3.6 like this i think it was Oh, I have to point it to the bin. Okay, then never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Shit. User uh, lib Python 3.6 slash bin slash Python. Time to go to sleep, Mr. Streamer. All right, cool, dude. Bye. Bye, Puka. I guess it's Python 3 in that case. If it doesn't like it. If I didn't fuck up. Oh, now we don't even paste stuff? Nice, great. All right, let's, let's try to list it properly at the bottom here. Let's do user lib. It is Python 3.6. Are you fucking kidding me? And then there's bin. Oh, there's no bin. Well, where's Python then? <laughs> there's no bin. Is this like a borked install directory? Perhaps it is. Perhaps it's like a, an aborted install of Python that, that doesn't have everything. Or it's just like straight up straight up uh whatever is in user uh bin or local bin whatever all right so let's scroll up i might have to I might have been smarter to do like i gotta grab on this the p is not too far away mm -hmm user bin yeah that's what i'm thinking yeah that's what i'm thinking now it might have just like it has a weird spot like for the install but then links it and i'm trying to see where the sim link points to for python 3.6 uh, or python 3 here yeah i should have definitely gone for <laughs> python 3.6 oh it's straight up here okay that that's it i think you're you're absolutely right crossbow in this case yeah 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 absolutely right it is just like forget this it's literally just user bin uh python three and i could do 3.6 but same thing and then it says in user lib python 3.6 site packages yes that's also the right one yeah It's it's true, but also not true at the same time, man. Because some people don't fucking do it that way. Because <laughs> individual packages will will not install always the same way. Uh, so on paper, it's it's actually pretty great, but but it doesn't always work like that. Perhaps because of system permissions and stuff like that. But then people have you add stuff to your path, right? Uh, 
So there's a bunch of times where it's just like, hey, you build it from source here and then like add it to your path or make a sim link maybe then to user if, if you're smart. Uh, but yeah, let's use it like this. Like for example, all my, my Python stuff for real uh, has nothing to do with, with user bin, right? All my bins for, for Python are somewhere else. Uh, but this is good. So then we can do, I think that was yes up to, it was yes up till this guy. And then we do no, no, no. And then I think that was no to the OpenCL. And then we say yes to CUDA. Uh, then we say 9.1. Then I have to tell it that it's opt CUDA. This is good. And then 5.2 was fine. You want to know uh, that was yes. That was no. Now it's done. And then no on this. Yeah, here we go. Configure finish. Then let's try to do, I don't know if we want to do sudo at this point. I kind of assume it needs it. But it's only going to read. I don't think it's going to try to write to, to, to these things. Let's try to do it like straight up. If it actually gets started, we'll do some other stuff. Like we'll start looking at our player. Uh, fuck. <laughs> All right. Interesting. That was, that was a quick failure. Yeah. That was a quick failure. And it's doing the same issue again. doing the same thing and I'm not saying you should trust them yeah I'll do it I'll do it it's fine but I don't think that's the error like I don't, I don't, it, something else is happening even with that Python config opt config CUDA Try without the slash slash. <laughs> nah, it was it was probably sudo. Cause now it, it seems to be going further. No. <laughs> ah. Now we use system Python. It, it, that was still not enough. Unless unless something did not get created uh, correctly in uh, the configuration. And I think it's like this guy here that gets that gets generated. Can I just like see what's up in there? Oh fuck. The lesson here could be to uh wait for official releases. Yeah, that's all the uh that's all the uh the options. So if we get desperate, we could look at that stuff. I don't think we're ready. Yeah, so see it's using user bin and then user lib Python 3.6 site packages. That's good. Uh, everything's legit here. I don't see I don't see what's wrong. Need CUDA, yeah, opt CUDA. Then it's the cross tool stuff that I that's that's Android bullshit. Try a uh, verbose fails. No, yeah, no, I, I, I verbose failure or something like that. I, I did see it too. Just give me a sec. Uh, there was dash dash verbose failures. This one. It might still be like it doesn't find something, but we could we could give it a try. This one, uh, we'll add it. Nope. Nope. Did not work. Uh... No, it doesn't like it. It just doesn't like it. But now it did. Yeah, that it's definitely verbose failures now. Uh, I don't think we're figuring out much from that. Uh... 
it's still doing this bullshit that external local config CUDA cross tool. We're gonna have to search a little harder for that. Well, it's the same thing. I, I could have just kept Googling for this. It's Redis. <laughs> it totally is Redis. Ah, well, it might also be that my environment is set to not use system Python in PyEnv, and PyEnv is just like literally fucking with this uh, this stuff. Uh... Then people are arguing about Basil having a bug. That's always fun. Uh... Instead of disabling PyM, so people are disabling PyM. I'm not saying that this is a thing, but older GCC, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Use Python three five. Do not use PyM, okay. This is fun. Who's having fun? I'm having fun. I was expecting this to be, you know, like somewhat of a problem, but maybe not that much. Uninstall PyM. Well, we can just disable it. That's not too bad, man. Like I could, I could literally just go in. It's it's not as bad as it sounds. I could just like commented out of my because uh, it's just an entry technically in our bash rc so if i do like let's say nano right there's the pym stuff if i remove this or comment it out uh there's a good chance I'm having fun watching you because I'm having less fun trying to bootcamp Windows. Yeah, watching another person having issues is is oddly, oddly cathartic. Like it actually feels all right, you know. All right, so let me comment this out. Let me comment this out. Like, of course, we're gonna source it uh, after that. So that's dot hrc, and that should technically, oops, technically that should fuck up our our pym, right? So pym should not do anything anymore. It does even though I sourced it because probably have to unload I probably have to create a whole new yeah no it's still in the environment let me try to make a new window from this curse tensorflow <laughs> there you go by env not found all right let's do it from here how about that so sources now by env is not a thing here if I do python 3 or which or where is Python 3. Yeah, it's using user bin Python 3, 3.6. Three, All right, now there's someone that says don't use 3.6, but there's always someone that's going to say something different. I think without PyN, we might be a little luckier this time around. So let's try sources, TensorFlow. Uh, I'm going to split this window so we can see like this and do the good old uh, which Python 3. I can do that. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay, now we can do dot configure again. Uh huh, uh huh user bin python and not exactly we want to use user bin python 3 that's still fine then we do yes 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 no 
no, 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 yes, 9.1, uh, optcuda. Can you tell we've done this before? <laughs> this part at least. All right, uh, five two is good. Uh, no, GCC six is fine. It could be a GCC six is also too recent for this. That's good. No, Can, uh, configuration finished, and then good old. Um, I'm gonna steal it from the uh, the article again. Where's this guy? I think the slash slash. I know it's tickling a few of you guys, but. I think it's fine. It was also annoying me, but and sudo in this case should work because uh, I think I know what was wrong. Is that in a sense like the sudo uh, doesn't have access to anything about about uh, pyenv, right? So that might just be uh, that just might be the issue. Just might be the issue. But in this case, it's inst it's installed uh, system system wide system wise. Uh, would compiling CUDA be a reasonable alternative? Is that worse? It's probably worse because CUDA is like way more massive than uh, than TensorFlow is. So I, I I don't think would be swapping. Fucking hell! Ah, uh, now we're getting the same thing again. Same thing. Now there's not even like anything that has to do with PyM in this case, and it's still not liking it. It could be my version of Basil. It could be my version of uh, GCC. It could be it could also be that the command is not accurate for TensorFlow 1.5, this one, right? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did disable Android. So I didn't say yes to Android support. I didn't say yes. I append sudo to Basil build instead of disabling uh, PyM. I mean, like, it's not going to use, it can't use, okay, so let's, let's let's be smart for a second. It can't use PyEnv if it's not, a, like, PyEnv is not there, right? So it's going to use system Python. We gave it, gave it the proper paths, uh, and it doesn't like it. Use Python 3.5 rather than 3.6. I think that's bullshit. Uh, do not use PyEnv as I was using. Okay, well, let, we fix that. And it, it seems to be a common issue. It doesn't seem to just be me that's getting it. Should be in the next push. This is this is part of the deal, by the way. I'm just saying this is part of the deal. Like, if you want to do that stuff, like, I don't have to worry about it. I could still force people to use by, like, by the way, like TensorFlow 1.4. Uh, I don't have to do it, but I'm kind of curious because we will eventually want to get there, right? Someone added something to a file, uh, but the issue is pretty old. All right. Which one is that? 817, do I have that one open? Oh, that's old as fuck. I don't think that's... Uh... But they've always been using... Interesting. They've always been using Basil. Yeah, that is really, really old. I can try like some other... Perhaps we could get rid of uh, some of the stuff here. I guess I have to get more information. It seems like it is a Python error. It is a Python error. Uh, it has to do with, can open file external local config. It's driving me mad. It's driving me nuts, <laughs> but it's Python that's outputting that. So they're clearly, well, there's a few things. It has to be, 
Bazel is Java, right? So it, it's not Bazel that would be, that would be uh, outputting Python stuff. Uh, it has to be it has to be some some sort of like like it's using my Python three six to do that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe I'm missing something with my Python three. Maybe there's like Python three CUDA or Python CUDA rather. This thing's broken, man. <laughs> if you change it while it's searching, if you actually change a character, it's it's over. It just it's just not gonna do anything. Quality software. Quality. Nope. I know it's there. there. There's either like P Python TensorFlow, which is not what I want, uh, but Python CUDA. There is a, there's a I, I could probably just search for CUDA in this case. Py CUDA. Okay, Py CUDA. It's already there, and that would install the system Python. I mean, we can keep reading that stuff, but everyone seems to have like random, random like fixes to it. Could you resync the mass? Blah blah blah. No, 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 no. Unless, unless they fucked up something in one point five zero, uh, which is not out of the question. Uh, why is Doggo so dark? I don't know. I could try. I could try to fix it. If this is my this is my brain trying to look for an escape from this thing right now. <laughs> Let's try. Let's let's fix Doggo for a second. It's gonna make me feel better. I don't know why Doggo is so dark. Indeed, it's weird. This camera is bullshit. It's probably it's probably the problem. That was a little yellow though, so let's try to. Is that better? <laughs> there you go. That should be that should be better. <laughs> All right, now back to TensorFlow bullshit. Ah, uh, goddamn. There was a bug. So this guy, I, I think, is a. Uh, I think this guy is a uh, TensorFlow contributor. I'm not sure. Yeah, he is. So someone just vomited some some bullshit. One thing when you do that sort of that sort of work, like that you learn to really really appreciate, is is like people that actually like make the binaries and and provide them for you pre-built <laughs> uh you learn to appreciate that you do but in this case like 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 cuda 9.0 is not necessarily available in an easy fashion I don't know, man. I don't think I don't think we'll figure it out. Like it's it's it seems to be Python stuff that's missing. And I did get PyEnv out of the way, so I don't think that's what it is. And we did try without sudo and with sudo. I think it doesn't change shit. Watch it work now. That would be so bad. Wait. Hey. 
what? Is it? Is it? it that, that looks like it's working to me, chat. I'm just saying, I, I don't want to get excited. It could crash like in the next four hours, it could crash. Uh, but it looks like it's working. <laughs> uh, and the sudo was the problem. Like I should remove the sudo and use the system Python configuration that we did. I didn't change anything else. Looks like, uh, looks like, uh, yeah, <laughs> looks like we figured it out. Yo, go us. <laughs> All right. So this thing's going to obviously take a bunch of time, uh, but it doesn't look like it's crashing. So that's, that's good. That's good. Okay. Then I know, right. Okay. It makes me think of the rocket league. Okay. Like just like, okay. All right. Good. Uh, I'll leave it in this tab and then we'll start working on, on some other stuff. Uh, I do want to review because last time I, we tried to do it and it was it was a little complicated. But while this is compiling, uh, this should take a long time. It might not even uh, finish uh, before we're done with the stream today. Uh, but what we're going to do in, in the meantime is work with uh, we're going to go back to Serpent AI, of course, and we're going to try to like really, really break down what's happening with the player uh, input capture so that we can we can try to implement uh, you know, like end suggestion of having the actives. Uh, I'm going to lay everything down visually, right? So we're, we're going to use the Wacom. We're going to use the tablet. We're going to try to really like lay everything down the current way it works, the logic. Uh, we're laying everything on the table like that. And I, I, I want to refactor this thing perhaps. Uh, so we might have to dismantle a bit like how th these things are working. Uh, I didn't say it was fine. I didn't say it. It looks like it's fine. It's not a jinx, right? The worst part is that we're not even done because after this is built, this is built against system Python. Now I have to make it work against uh, in, in my virtual lamp. But this is a good sign. If we can get it to compile with CUDA 9.1, it's already a good uh, a good start. All right, so I'm going to prepare some sort of like serpent environment. Is it going to let me do it? Yeah, there we go. So we're going to split the windows. It's going to take a second. Because uh, I did have to reboot because I installed a, lot, a bunch of packages. So let's get our framework code. Yeah. I feel like it might help uh, if you try to save the frames chronologically uh, in the refactor. Uh, but you might disagree. Well, not necessarily. Uh, I, I just needed a, a unique identifier. Uh, I just needed a, a unique identifier for my frames. But if I use like the time.time, .time, technically that has like what? Like microsecond precision uh in, in python uh i should have a unique technically i should have a unique string uh for my frame sequence uh that that is orderable so instead of using uid4 maybe it's it's worth using time time that time what's up knorr this is not a recording this time you're actually here for real all right so let's do project uh that would be project ec which is still the undercover name for a serpent ai framework uh, so we're gonna get here. It should uh, it should have used the serpent, and that's a little weird. Should have used the oh fuck, <laughs> right? Because we disabled because we disabled pyn. All right, great, <laughs> great. Uh, I think since this window and this is what I don't want to fuck with that. I really do not want to fuck with that. This window, this shell already has like like no pym. So if I go and change the right chat right, <laughs> nothing's gonna go wrong if I reactivate pym in this shell. Surely nothing's gonna happen. Nothing bad's gonna happen. So if I go and change this guy, yeah, it's gonna be fine. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I was not asking seriously. I know it's gonna be fine. I want to create some tension. All right, and I source this guy here. I'm going to have to do it everywhere, so I might as well just copy oops, this uh, uh, this bit here. And see, now it's using Serpent. That's what I was missing. I was like, wait a minute. We're not using our Serpent virtual lamp. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure to paste this in all the windows, especially these ones. Oop. Might as well do all. All right, cool. Usually I just run H top and that top core, not top, fuck. 
H dot uh, in the top corner. Of course, like the CPU is gonna be like going like crazy because we're uh, we're compiling uh, TensorFlow. All right, now we have this, which is my framework code. Uh, here I would uh, go into Serpent AI, which is my user code. So I'm pretending that I'm a user that installed the Serpent AI framework on that top, uh, bottom left, sorry. Uh, and usually what I do here is run a, a notebook, right? Uh, so I go to projects, project PC, I just do Jupyter notebook. Nah, not notebooks, plural. What the fuck are you doing? Like this. It's gonna open it up in the browser. All right, that's how I set up my environment. So it's not like like incredibly complicated. I think we were messing around in Untitled last time. Yeah, we had a bunch of stuff with the H, uh, which is good because we're still in the context of, of doing the player recording stuff. Uh, we can close this. We can close a bunch of shit now, actually. This is kind of gone. This is gone. All right, so we have notebook. Uh, let's go and get some uh, code editor going. I did reboot, so like I said, I have nothing. I'm gonna get Serpent AI in there. Uh, which one is this? That had that is def that's the schedule. Definitely not what we're looking for. So Project EC is still my Serpent AI framework code. So we're gonna get that in VS Code. I'm gonna make a new window and I'm also gonna load Serpent AI, which is like my user code. And then we have our game agent code in the user stuff and we have our framework, uh, our actual dev code for the framework in there. All right, cool. So uh, the crux of the issue, what we're gonna be doing next is, like I said, is just like laying down on the table everything that we have about recording player inputs. Uh, so that's not actually released right now. It's actually not in uh, like the current beta, uh, but we're really, really pushing for that feature. Uh, it, it, it's a feature that from the command line, you can just like launch your game and you can then say like, start recording my keyboard actions and it's gonna record uh, the inputs, like your actual keyboard presses along with the frames and even potentially uh, run a reward function uh, if you're intending to do reinforcement learning. Uh, so the feature is pretty good. Uh, I, I We got a suggestion from Anne in chat. I was like, that's a good idea. I like it. Uh, I tried it just like, I don't know, append it or just like make it work with what we had. And it was a bit problematic. It didn't really work out. So I, I, this is why I want to just like lay it all out on the table. All right, we're just, it's a, it's a puzzle. Uh, we're, we're putting all the pieces on the table. We're going to remove a few pieces. We're just going to like, like move some around. We're just going to be doing a bit of a, I don't know, we're gonna be playing operation or something, I'm trying to replace some stuff and, and remove some stuff and in a in a in an effort to better understand like like and perhaps like make a better feature out of it too, right? Uh so all of this that I mentioned, what we're gonna be like like laying down on the table is the the uh game agent base class. Uh and inside of that base class for the game agent, uh there is two major uh there are two major uh, functions or instance methods. One is handle record, which is what actually like happens, like what actually runs to record like the, the player actions and, and, and get the frames and store the frames and, and, and make them available later for writing to the disk. Uh, and the second one that's important is on record pause, right? On record pause is when we lose the focus, uh, the game loses the focus, it will actually execute this callback when we're recording and Losing the game focus in the Serpent AI framework is uh, is something I use a lot uh, to do I/O operations, right? So I, I use it as, as an opportunity to do I/O stuff, right? So if I have to write stuff to disk, I don't want to do it as I collect the observations because that slows down everything. Uh, so I, I prefer to just like keep everything in memory, and then once we lose the focus on the game, this callback gets triggered. We have all the observation in memory. And then we can just write it to the file uh, and it takes whatever time it takes. It doesn't matter. We're not slowing down or anything. So these two are, are the major ones that we're going to be looking at, right? We're going to try to dissect and understand how they work and try to make it work a little better. Uh, so let's go. Let's, let's start from the, let's start from the beginning. How about that? How about that? All right. Uh, first thing that I, that I, that I do here and there's already a comment I want to make about that one. Uh, I was thinking like, 
I don't know why we're doing it that slow, to be honest. Uh, keyboard events, right? So we're going to be collecting a, a collection of, of keyboard events that happen uh, in a certain, like, like, like a, in a specific uh, bucket of time, like a section, like whatever, like a little segment of time. Uh, so my code's going to be blocking for that amount of time. And whatever happens keyboard wise uh, will be will be collected and, and we can handle it after. Uh, but right now it's set to uh, the duration is set to one divided by the FES. So basically the amount of time in seconds uh, that represents the, the FPS, the desired FPS for the game. So uh, and it's not the FPS for the game itself, but rather like how you configure uh, your FPS. Right. So in here we have this guy's always in the way. Uh, we have our Serpent Cannibal Game Agent plugin. That's on the user side. That's not in the framework. And we do specify an FPS of four. What does FPS, like specifying in the framework, do? Well, it, it actually limits your, your ingestion rate of frames in your game agent. Actually throttles your frame rate to, to this, right? So if you actually take more time and we can't fit four FPS, that's going to be it. But if you're going too fast, it's going to wait a bit before it gives you the next frame to respect the four FPS. Uh, and I'm using this when recording, but I'm not sure this is this is even wise, um, because 250 milliseconds—that's a long time. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I, I think it's a long. I think it's a long time. Uh, what's the distro? There's a there's a command for that. You'll you'll chat will do it. They, they're pretty good at that. I'm gonna wait like like literally like one second and. Unless everyone's sleeping at the wheel, then I can do it. All right. I'll do it. Thank you in advance, chat. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Ed. All right. So this, this FPS uh, ends up dictating, at least in our recording, uh, what's the alternative? Well, there's no... There's no... Uh, What's the alternative to waiting? Away? Well, I, capturing faster would be my, I don't think I have like a, a specific, like arbitrary uh, number that makes sense that's configurable, but I think like at, at least like capturing faster would make sense, right? Uh, I just I just think that it's kind of horrible that we're waiting 250 milliseconds. Uh, we're blocking for 250 milliseconds just to catch all these. And then we're associating that with a, like a single uh, set of frames, yeah. That's why the FPS are configurable? No, because the FPS that you're using, I'm using the FPS there as, uh, hey, I already have an FPS, but it's not configurable. Like the FPS key in the config is not for that. It's not to control that part. It's to control the ingestion rate of, of your game agent, right? Uh, the, the recording feature, what's up, Lee Disney? The recording feature itself is, is a game agent frame handler. But users don't know that, right? We know that because we're developing this thing, but users don't know this necessarily. So yes, it might seem like, hey, it's just an option that we can kind of tap into. Uh, but the way this FPS like, like key or, or config key has been presented to people uh, in the documentation, it's not for that. It's to lock uh, the frame, uh, the ingestion rate of your frames when you're actually playing the game. So when you're doing Serpent Play, uh, this is the expectation. So I was kind of like just piggybacking on that. Uh, but I don't think there's a there's a need, uh, especially if we implement it the right way. There's a need to really really make this uh, configurable. I think we could just say like, I don't know, man. Like every point one second, and, and that's it. We're gonna be polling for like one point one second. This is the amount of time we block uh, the execution of our code to receive uh, keyboard events from from the system. And then we do a bunch of stuff that that's that's not very long to execute, and we just store it. We just store it in memory. And then once we're once we actually like focus out of the game, this is where we'll just write the observations to the HDF5 uh, binary uh, flat file. So the first question is really like like on that first line. So what does capture key uh, ca capture keys do? Uh, It makes sense to have it be configurable. Well, we could add record FPS and just like have a default perhaps. That's that's always something we could do. So that's way that way it is it is technically configurable, but I, I don't want that to be an option that people have to worry about. 
because a lot of people might not even do like recording uh, with the framework. But yeah, we could we could technically have a key that's re record like like recording FPS or record FPS, and that way at least it's configurable. But I don't want to surface it as a default option that people have to worry about when they're installed. Because because the last thing I want people to have to deal with is like like a it generated like all this plugin and it has like every plugin has like five thousand like entries in the config. Right? Uh, I'm a big fan of people discovering rather people discovering later on that like when they learn about a feature that they can do this right optionally to control the FPS of their of their recording. Uh, so I, I definitely, I, I, I can do it. I'm okay with that. I think the logic is there. I think I, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, but, but I definitely do not want to add it to the template of, of uh, yeah. Because otherwise it's a little intimidating. I'm sure if you guys have had that feeling before when you install some some piece of software, right, somewhere. And, and uh, you know, you just open the config and you see like like pages upon pages of of keys. It's just it's just a feeling that's not too good, right? You're like, oh fuck, I have to learn about like what all of this does. <laughs> uh, so I I don't want it to to kind of like give you that sort of impression. It's still configurable, but but you kind of discover uh, the keys as you learn about the individual features. I think that's a better experience in general, uh, and it, it would st still work behind the scenes. All right. So what we'll do is. Uh, so now I'm not sure that this key exists. We're going to like, I like it still. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I think it's a good idea. So we're still going to do it, but I can't get it that way if we do that. So I'll do dot get and we'll have an or clause instead. All right. So I'm going to look for that key to be there. Uh, if it's not there, then we'll just use something like, you know, like 10. And then we're going to put that in a set of brackets. So now it's going to use either record FPS that you have in your config for your plugin, or it's going to use 10. So it's going to be like every 10th of a second, something like that. All right. So let's start with that. That's good. All right. Now uh, there was this whole, uh, let's try to figure out the frame shape. Uh, we've had discussions about that uh, and getting, getting kind of like really uh, involved with that sort of stuff. Uh, this feels like really, really like like poorly done. It it makes it work and it's kind of necessary, but it also feels like 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 a lot of code that should just be handled somewhere. Like that's my my raw feeling with this thing. So I did like the idea of encoding the uh, the shape along with the bytes. I didn't think that that idea was kind of neat. Uh, but that that that's probably too much for today. So I don't th I don't think we can do that like straight up. Because right now the way the way the, the frame grabbing works, right? The way the frame grabbing works in uh, in Serpent AI, uh, there's a separate process that that where you know like the only responsibility for that process is to capture frames at a locked rate and store them in memory. Uh, and one of the issue that arises quite a bit is these frames getting like like getting transformed in in some way. Uh, and now, and it, when on the other end, on the receiving end, we want to map the bytes back to like a, a matrix, a bitmap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have an issue with the reshaping because we're we're saying, hey, can you take these bytes and make them this size? But if the config didn't really like, like there's a disconnect somewhere uh, that something happened, like like to that image data, uh, it's going to give us a bunch of like reshape uh, issues. Basically, it's saying like you're asking me to put too many or not enough bytes for that shape and, and it blows up. So we're having a lot of issues with that. And, and one of the ideas was to say, maybe we could, uh, we could encode along with these bytes, we could encode something with a separator where, uh, you know, like we'd have the shape uh, of this thing. And then we don't have to do all these stupid checks, right? That I'm doing here. Cause now I don't know, like what, what am I getting, right? What am I getting? So we have to build a shape. So if it's a color image, I have to have this third dimension here to say three color channels. If it's a grayscale thing that we're getting, I have to only focus on, yeah. 
I kind of want to start doing that, but holy shit, am I going to run out of time today? Because this today is not supposed to be a super, super long stream. Um, if I get into that, that's that's opening like a crazy, crazy, crazy task. And that, that might be super beneficial in the end. But I'd be looking at at storing the and coding the shape. And I've had another suggestion from someone else on the Discord to also encode uh, a timestamp. And I think that's pretty cool. And I think that's something we, we, we should have thought from the beginning. Uh, but this is why I like people using the framework uh, and, and sharing their ideas on Discord because that's something I didn't think of. And someone had a, a case where knowing the point in time or rather the time delta between two frames was was really really like useful um, so maybe we want to at least start that and then tomorrow we can keep working on uh, keep working on it so maybe we can make it what we're doing right now a two-parter and and try to really really bring some some improvements uh, along the way so when i write stuff let, let, let's just find it like see what happens ends up happening is, is actually pretty simple uh, a, a frame grabber when it gets a frame uh, eventually there, there's a part where it says hey store in that redis key store the representation of that frame to bytes to bytes thing is something that you can call on the numpy array and it will really like just like serialize like this whole thing as as bytes like as a, as a byte array uh, and that is compatible with, with what we're using in redis uh, so the goal would be to yes have frame to bytes but also figure out the shape of this thing and the time at which it was. And it, it, we have it already. Well, we have the daytime UTC now. We'd need the time that time, uh, which is probably a little, uh, a little friendlier. I don't know, you guys, how do you guys feel about that? So we're adding information in the, in the sense that we have, uh, we now have the timestamp, like the system timestamp where this frame was, was collected. And the other one, the other benefit is that we will be able to clean up a bunch of code if we actually append the shape uh, also to that to those bytes. Of course, now we're gonna have to change the code that receives these frames to be able to, to kind of like split that sequence of bytes to figure out what the shape and the timestamp is, but it's kind of neat that we have this information. I like it. Is Redis an in-memory nose? Yes, absolutely. Yes, like Dope is saying, yes, it is. It's a, it, I'm a big fan. You did. You did see uh, the G that I'm a big fan in the intro. I saw the comment on on the on the YouTube's. <laughs> yes, it it has actually occupies a bunch of uh, room in, in our stream. Redis is something I'm a big fan of personally, and uh, I, I tend to leverage it uh, when I can. When I can, I, I I I try to use it. There's no command for Redis. It should only reply. Redis is God. <laughs> yeah. You can't just stop distro hopping, help me. Well, it, it really depends. Like the distro hopping itself, Luke, could just be could just be what you find enjoyable and that's okay. Now, if you actually have some work to do, then then it's easy. Then you just like install something and as, as long as you can get your work done, you're good to go. That's it, right? So for a lot of people, like just that, that's Ubuntu right there. Like you're just like, like I can do my stuff. I can install, I, I figure out how to install shit and we're good to go. Uh, the thing that's sometimes annoying with with non-rolling uh, release distros is is like having to build a lot of packages uh, from scratch yourself just because they're not the latest pack, like the latest versions. However, conversely, with rolling release stuff, if you have one package that expects like stables, uh, you're also you're also kind of fucked because your rolling release will just get the latest stuff always. Uh, so. You know, like it's it's both just make your own distro. I don't think that's solving the problem though, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Arch, I, I really, I really, an Arch base, you don't have to go like hardcore, like super hardcore Arch. I don't think you have to do that. But an Arch base, I really, really like, right? The the Arch wiki is is, is pretty awesome. The Arch user repository is, is friggin' awesome, right? Uh, and you have a rolling release like distro where you get like all the latest packages always uh pretty pretty cool stuff and then and then when i say base i'm using antergo so it's like a noob arch for sure like a lot of stuff is just pre-configured for you which is fine well i'm okay with that because it allows me to work right some people some other people like to configure their machine uh customize everything and uh, then maybe you just go with arch like straight up 
but it's fun. It's fun. I, I want to do it, chat. I really want to do it. I think we're going to at least append like the timestamp because that was definitely a request that I saw in, in Discord. So, and it, it should have always been there, to be honest. But that's going to, that's a major, like, let's just be real for a second. That's going to be a major, like, breaking change in a sense, the, the Serpent AI, if we do that. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Yeah, I want to do it. I want to do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're doing it. We're doing it. I have to consider it. That's the thing. Once once something is out, once you have a project that's out like this, uh, that's in the hands of people, you have to you have to be you have to slow down your YOLO a bit. Like you have to like step off the YOLO pedal and always think of the implications, right? Uh, maybe it's not going to affect people in the sense that it's going to break their code because it's behind the scenes stuff. But uh, when things are changing too fast like that, it doesn't really project like any sort of confidence from. <laughs> Like like from the code base it, it, itself, but having a frame timestamp, I, I I don't see a scenario where this is not useful, right? And uh, appending the shape, also encoding the shape along, is also great because it's gonna save me a ton of of image like like of of checking code, right? Uh, I can just like like establish the shape uh, from there and and be good. Yeah. Yeah, go fast and break things. Yes, we gotta go fast, chat. All right. So how do we? Okay. So how do we do this? So I have cycle start. I'm using cycle start to do a. Uh, I'm using cycle start to do some sort of like like, the 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 frame locking is is what I'm using it for, right? Yeah, that that's what I'm using. So I'm I'm it's kind of like a shitty like like homegrown way of of sleeping like calculating the frame time and sleeping for whatever's left right well yeah. pwn you, you pwn i don't know if it's pwn or pwn or whatever but you can you can always use uh easier distros to start with and that doesn't mean you can customize them after the fact but stuff like antergos or manjaro might be a little easier uh to start with if you're really, really hell bent, like what the link that Anne posted is actually pretty good. But you might just if you're if it's your first time around, uh, you might have an easier time with Antergos or, or Manjaro, just because a lot of stuff is pre-configured, and then you can start customizing stuff at your own, uh, you know, at your own pace as you learn uh, about the systems. All right, so cycle start. I'm using, and I'm getting the date time now. I think it's kind of it's fine, but I'm I'm planning to use the microseconds of the time delta between these things. Could I not technically replace this? That's gonna be the first question. Could I not technically replace this by time by uh, dot time, which is also a microsecond timestamp? Uh, it has no concept of like date. It's probably just like a timestamp since epoch with microseconds. But then just like to try to tweak my my frame uh, my frame like like limiter uh, logic to use that time dot time instead of that because if I use time dot time I could also use the cycle start time dot time as uh, the entry uh, you know like as the timestamp for my frame that I'm saving I think that'd be kind of nice I definitely do not want to save it as a day daytime object. <laughs> that's that's not going to be serializable like really easy. Um, so let's let's yeah let's mess around in the notebook a bit and see how that logic works like right now. So it's a it's a it's an infinite loop uh, that will block if we have any sort of frame time left by the time we're done executing this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Python is probably not something you, you would go all in on, I would say. Uh, but it's definitely a nice tool to have in your little tool belt. There's no way it's not going to be useful if you learn it. Right? It's going to be useful. Uh, you may end up liking some other stuff better. There may be better suited tools for what you want to do in the end. Uh, but it's not a bad tool to have on your belt. Okay, so let's bring that to the notebook. Let's do that. I can just scroll down. That's my that's my solution to everything. 
Just like add more cells. Don't clean up, just add more cells. All right, so we're gonna do from uh, date time import date time. Just wish Python had static and strong type in systems. Well, you can't have it all, can you? It was never meant to be like that. All right, so time not time versus, let's try to see what, what comes out of there. Because we have to make it like work the same way. Let's do T1. D1. I know, I know it's weird, but like, bear with me. Bear with me. I, I know where I'm going with this. All right, so we're going to do a time dot time. Uh, that's going to give me a time stamp. And I'm also going to have date time dot. So programming language do you have in your sleeves? Well, well, anything that that works out as a tool, it's kind of weird as an answer. Like it's, I don't set out to like do, uh, I don't plan out to use like this and this and that language, right? It's mostly what I've had to use in in my career, and I think it's a lot. It's like that for a lot of people in the end, right? So you probably like learn programming through a language or one or two. Uh, and then as you work, like like some other place that you work at might use a different stack and there you go. You're just going to learn that thing, right? And then you, you kind of form an opinion on it. Now do this for, for a bunch of years and then you're going to come to know a bunch of languages, right? So unless you just decide to stick to always the same job with the same language, uh, if you do move out a bit, you'll definitely see some... Uh, Definitely get some information like that. Uh, so I don't think I have like a like a clear answer because anything that I answer to this, Luke, is going to be interpreted as oh, I might want to consider this, and it's not exactly it's not exactly that. Uh, it's not exactly that. It's not because I've done it and I know it that it's be it should be your story too, right? So I don't really have like, I'd say just like learn, if you can learn like something for the web, you can learn something that's functional and something that's or object oriented. Yeah, you're probably kind of good. And then whatever they turn out to be, uh, it might be different based on your job market and, and stuff like that. All right. I have to be ashamed of their PHP. I'm definitely not ashamed of my PHP history. I've made a lot of money with PHP in my life. I am not going to be ashamed of that. Definitely not. All right. So, of course, like the milliseconds won't line up. Oh, it's even more than microseconds in this case. It's all the same. Well, it kind of is in the end, right? And this is weird. And, and this is like, how do you guys approach that? Like, okay, so there's definitely some people in chat that are willing to learn. And that's super cool, right? That's that's definitely uh, something I love to have around in, in, in my chat while we're doing this stuff. But there's also people that are a little more experienced and and seriously like the, to the people i'm going to address this to the people that are a little more experienced right now how do you how do you answer this question to uh to newcomers right or perhaps like more junior developers because you'll get that question quite a bit and it's funny because the the as you you know like like build your experience and have like like i don't know like you work for 5 10 15 years in the industry it's a it's the question you stop getting asked by by your surroundings uh, but it, but it's always like the, the more junior developers that ask us. So what's your so my question to the more experienced people is, what's your what's your answer to that when a junior asks you, right? What programming language do you use or what should I use? Uh, what what tends to be your answer? Right? I think I kind of gave my own, uh, it's, it, and it's a bit of a non-answer, but it's also the most like in my opinion the most correct answer you can give a more junior dev. Um, yeah, it's more about learning paradigms that, that, than it is uh, learning languages, in my opinion, too. I like that, and I think it's like it's a good. It, it's getting like very because because if you know if you know Python, there's a good chance you can figure out Ruby or Perl or PHP, right? Because because they have similarities. They're not the same, but they have similarities. Uh, but but different paradigms like like Haskell, right? If you know P Python, you don't know Haskell. Trust me, <laughs> you don't. All right, so it's it's good to explore different uh, 
Yeah, right tool for the right task is also something I like. I do like that. And I do say it uh, quite a bit here too, what, when people want to argue about that stuff. Because uh, it's a question I, I, I feel like, like we get when we're a little more experienced and we're just like, how is that even a question? But then we don't want to like answer like that. Right? We don't want to answer like that, but it's it's more like 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 let your let let whatever experience like that you get along your career shape you. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is true. Dope for the most part, it is very true. But but like trying to like I said like like translate Python to Haskell, that's gonna definitely not gonna work out. But but different like like let's say like a Python to a Ruby, a Python to a PHP, that's going to work for sure. Like you're going to find similarities, right? Um, so this is true mostly, right? And it might be enough. It might be enough for what you're trying to do in your career. It might be enough to just like stick to one paradigm. Uh, yeah. But you start with concepts like OOP, sorting and yeah, yeah, exactly. Because really, like, what you're gonna, what's gonna happen is, is two things, right? You're gonna, two things are gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna learn like, 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 principles of programming through that language. So you're not learning a language. You're learning principles of programming and then applying them with that language. Uh, and also, 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 also. Uh, you're getting experience like like in in problem solving, right? So you're gonna you're gonna get like a lot of issues that you're gonna overcome uh, and figure out how to like. And it has nothing to do with with code itself. You're not learning how to do it with Python. Uh, you're you're learning how to solve the problem, how to break it down in, in smaller components and, and addressing them. Uh, the programming language is mostly just like the, the the like expressing the solution. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is widely used, yeah. So the question probably is better to it's probably better to ask like would this be a, a bad idea for this use case than it is this the good language for this thing, right? Cuz cuz people are going to tell you all sorts of stuff really in the end, myself included, right? Uh but but really like is it a good enough tool to do this is probably like a fair question um yeah just finding my way that's good it's perfect all right so i need i need to get this down uh just give me a sec so so when i do this like i'm gonna have like my first uh timestamps. uh the way it currently works is i'm gonna make a t2 here that does the same thing but I, i'm not gonna execute at the same time and I'm also gonna make a D2 like this. I should keep an eye on my TensorFlow. I'm terrified. We're still good. We're still good. <laughs> it's still it's still building. I'm not gonna complain. Should I do like that? I'm not. If there are libraries for it, why not? I don't think there are though. That's one of the problems. I don't think there's like like there there may be you know what like there may be like like spark wrappers for PHP for all I know right Keep in mind and we talk about this quite a lot here like it's it's mostly about getting appropriate tools for yourself to build stuff right never never lose sight of of the goal of building things right it, it's better to build something with with so so tools than it is to not build anything at all with perfect tools how about that all right so and, and a lot of, it might seem like i'm just like like saying super obvious shit, but a lot of people seem to lose themselves along the way and they're like i'm not going to start working on this until my tool is perfect uh and, and sadly there's more than one tool so they just like go from tool to tool and, and try to have the perfect stack uh sadly by the time they're done their first tool that they settled that was perfect is not perfect anymore uh so they just restart and they get stuck in this loop right they just get stuck in this loop and they don't really ship anything they don't really build anything uh you're probably you probably got interested in programming because you you, you saw some something being done something be, being built and you were like that's fucking cool i want to do that right there's a good chance that that happened 
so never lose sight. It's so easy to lose sight with the tools, the languages, the like everything. Uh, try to get it all perfect and to say like, now I'm finally qualified to program. And it, it couldn't be further from the truth, right? You're, if you're building stuff, you're programming. There you go. That's it. Right. And yes, having fun, right? Having fun is, is also kind of important. And this is where perhaps language uh, choices may, may come in. If you really, really hate a language, well, I could see I could see why people would, would want to use something else. But keep in mind, right? Keep in mind. You don't want to you don't want to get stuck and lose sight of why you started programming in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Got interested in programming because yeah, well that's that's it. You might laugh now, right? You're laughing now about that, but that's what got you interested because you wanted to do something. You wanted to get something done, right? So what I want to show you is what happens when I do d2 minus d1, right? So what does that give us? Like someone should know here. Someone should know this if you're paying attention. It's to have wizard powers. <laughs> To get all the ladies is definitely why you started programming, right? Absolutely, right? You're just like, I'm going to show you a magic trick. <laughs> uh, D2 minus D1. What that's like? Someone in chat's going to know this. Come on, look at D1. Look at D2. What's going to what what that what, what does that give us in Python? If I subtract D2 from D1, go chat, go chat. <laughs> <laughs> I got interested in programming because I wanted to date Angelina uh, <laughs> Jolie from the Hackers. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's obviously a joke. Like, yeah, they, they find it boring. Like, most of them do. Yeah, that's true. Most of them. Not all of them, but yeah, most of them. TD. Yes, TD. Indeed. Time Delta. Yes, thank you. All right. So it's not a date time. It's a time Delta that we're going to get. And the time Delta has a micro uh, second... Uh, I don't know how I did that. It's magic. Uh, it has a microsecond property, right? So if I want to get just the microseconds uh, like this, I guess it doesn't autocomplete it for some, because it probably hasn't figured out that it's a time delta. Uh, it would still work, however, right? See? Now, what does it give us? Does it give me the entire, does it just give me the microseconds part? I think that's what it does. Oh yeah, that's most definitely what it does. All right, and I was working with that. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think this limiter works as long as the, the, the rate that you're capturing at in your frame grabber is under like a second. And it's always like that, right? Technically. Yeah. No, you were right. It was a time delta. Yeah, it was a time delta. All right, so the microseconds, I'm using the microseconds and the only reason it works, right, is because like, like I said, like my fixed rate uh, is gonna be below a, a single second, right? Because normally how it works is you have, uh, it, and it's weird and I, I don't know exactly the, the reasons why they do this, right? Yeah, I don't know, but that's what I'm, I'm getting to that. And you're just like fucking jumping the gun right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting there slowly. I'm getting there slowly. Because right now it is using this, right? Right now it is using this. And it was using the microseconds uh, and was figuring out if the difference between this, there's, there's still... Uh... I switched to Arrow for my Python's time stuff. Nice, nice. So Arrow, I, I don't use it, but I remember the name. I remember seeing it pass by, yeah. No, the goal is definitely to go to time, but I just want to make sure that we're going to get the similar behavior. That's it. That's why. Um, so what I'm doing is here, like you see it here, right? Uh, a frame time, a frame time is, is how much like I should allocate to a frame. So if my, my rate is 30 FPS, technically the frame time should be one divided by 30. Uh, the cycle duration is uh, this here, right here. So the amount of microseconds uh, that we have if we divide the cycle start with the cycle end. So everything that was done in between. And then we figure out, do we have any sort of time left? If we do, we need to sleep to lock, like to make sure that we're, so it's not perfect, but it's definitely good enough, right? So it's definitely, it's not like perfect microsecond precision, uh, like frame locking, but it's it's really good enough. And in practice, we observe the frames and it, it's really, really good. It's good enough for, for our use case. So I, I really just want to switch this 
my my I, I believe that it's actually pretty simple and that yes if we subtract t2 minus t1 we should get similar results yeah that's the seconds so i would have to get like the decimal places if i get the decimal places uh i got i got what i need right i got what i need so if i do this oh shit why is insert on that's so wrong yeah now i get 175 so let's 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 say i do td that's the time delta or whatever of these two and then i do td is td minus int of td i don't know if that's gonna work Can can we uh can we dial down the technically correct like for for a second? I, I'm getting a little annoyed by by correcting every single thing that gets said. Thank you very much. All right, there you go. That's it. That's it. So we can do this. It's it's a little shitty, but it works, right? And then I get my microseconds, and then I can compare that to my frame time, and my frame time, and then I can figure out. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure we can. And then if I do that. All right, let's bring in let's bring in time. Uh, do I need daytime anywhere else? That's the first thing we should check. We'll, we'll remove that. We don't. All right, so bye bye. That's gone. And this is now time dot time. And then we can do this here. This is also time dot time. Cycle end minus cycle start. That's my T1 minus T2. I don't need this here, right? And then I'm going to add whatever I just did here to get rid of the uh, whatever's not a decimal place. So I'm going to say cycle duration is going to be uh, cycle duration minus, or I can do minus equal uh, int of cycle duration. And that's going to be my duration. And my frame time left is going to be Mm-hmm. Self dot frame time minus cycle duration. Nice. And then we're gonna see whatever's left, if anything's left, right? If anything's left. All right, let's go. Uh that should work. And then if that works, then what's cool about that is I can use cycle start also as my timestamp for uh for the frame. All right, so if I do T1 here, we look at T1. I see it's a bunch of seconds, probably since epoch with microsecond precision. Um, so that's something we can probably like just like turn into a string and, and add to our encoding of the frame. Yeah, that's much better. I don't know why I never used time instead. <laughs> I, I don't even understand why I was using date time. I, I should have been using time the entire the entire time. I don't know. I don't know why. I was using datetime here dot etc now. All right, all right now. Okay, so now we need to collect the information. I have the time that the time step already. It's cycle start. Uh, what's the other information? The other information is my is my shape, right? Uh, so at at some point in time, I I do have a frame. Uh, in both cases, it's here, and, and I replace it to use frame pipeline. Uh, but we can ask a frame that's a numpy array we can ask what's your shape right we can say what your shape is like hey yo uh, describe your shape and if that's the sort of shape we would like to well there's two things right we want the shape we want the full shape and we also want the the data type and the data type could either be uh, a float 64 uh, that that would be between 0 and 1 or it could be a unt 8 so between 0 and 255 as ints uh, and I'm looking to say on top of the frame bytes, we're going to add the time, right? The timestamp, the shape, and the data type. 
And that's going to simplify a bunch of stuff when we consume that information on the other end. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly simplify. We, we never know, really. I, I, I don't want to ever say something's going to be simple again because you know how that goes. All right. So we have the, the time. Now let's get the shape. We get the shape from uh, a dot shape. That's good. And uh, finally, the data type, we can also ask it. So let's prepare our, our bytes. Let's prepare our bytes. How do we do this? Let's do frame bytes. And we're also gonna do frame pipeline bytes. Let's prepare it that way. I really need to take a, a, a mini piss. All right, I need to work on that. <laughs> so you're gonna have to give me a sec to go and, and, and do that chat. But we're on the right track for this. All right, so I can do a frame pipeline. If you don't remember what the, the pipeline is, pipeline is, is I'm using some spare, like the spare time. See, there's this frame time concept. All right, so I'm saying technically to do 30 FPS, you have this amount of time to do whatever computation you need to do. Now, if I was just storing my capture in, in, inside of Redis as a, as a byte array, uh, I have some I have some time to spare. Most of the time, it would end up sleeping here. So what I figured I'd do uh, that that's that's pretty cool is I'd I'd also uh, have a feature in the framework to to transform uh, this this frame that we're capturing. So I already I just grab it once, uh, I, I keep it as is, and I consider that the full you know the full frame. Uh, but we also we also transform uh, that with the spare our spare time. Right. So of course, if your transformation is, is super disgustingly not optimized, then maybe you're going to not be able to do your 30 FPS anymore. Uh, and that sucks, but it's kind of on you. You have to keep it reasonable. You have to keep it reasonable. reasonable. Uh, uh, all right, frame bytes, frame pipeline bytes. Here it comes. There it comes. What, what co What's coming? What's coming? The piss? <laughs> the piss needs to be coming. That's one thing that needs to be coming really soon. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just make this a, a string. What I'm planning to do is use an F string that I'm going to encode, right? Uh, using UTF-8. Uh, preferably inside the quotes, yes. Uh, and then I'm just going to add on top of that the frame, uh, the frame bytes. And I need some sort of separator too, but we'll figure that out. It's fine. Uh, the separator can live inside of that string. So I need to be able to pop out the separate components, right? Uh, and once I'm able to do that, uh, I'll, I'll be able to kind of just like like read them. Frame bytes, what am I doing? Frame dot bytes, or two bytes in this case. Frame dot two bytes, like this. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. We just need to balance it out. I know what you're saying. <laughs> I do tend to see, uh, let's say, a concept in the uh, <laughs> a concept in the framework, and tend to just like run away with it because I assume that that people that are watching might have never heard of it before. So I like I like to give context, but sometimes it becomes a little too much indeed. <laughs> All right, so that's like a start here. Definitely a start. Redis will accept like raw bytes. Uh, so I do have to encode here and the frame two bytes that's already, uh, that's already encoded. And this is where we're going to add our extra information just in front, right? Just in front. So we need to figure out a way to split it. Uh, some sort of like character combination to split on that's going to be, you know, like sort of safe and then get the information in there. I'm going to do that after my, my mini, mini break. So just give me Give me like five minutes tops. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. I'm going to give you full screen doggo. How about that?
All right, I'm back. I'm gonna get, bring you guys back. Hopefully, you enjoyed that uh, that full screen doggle moment. There you go. We're back. We're back. Just gonna get myself a drink. There we go. Cheers, chat, and uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So this is this is good stuff. This is good stuff. I, I have a, a nice feeling that this is gonna work without too many. Uh, you know, like without too many like like things breaking left and right, I think we're gonna be good. Uh, one thing we're gonna have to change for sure is our class method to get frames. I was thinking about that uh, during the little break because uh, we're we're accepting way too many uh, params, right? And this is what's cool. Uh, all I'm gonna need to pass in the future is just like which type of frame do we want to get and the indices. Like we don't need the shape and the D type anymore. Because that's going to be encoded along with the with the frame bytes, right? So that's good stuff. It's going to simplify our way of getting frames. All right. Okay. Oh, don't you dare! The beer is is getting excited. There, it wants to go out. It wants to float. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get our our timestamp in there and that would be cycle start now if i if i put it in like that like straight up in an f string what's going to happen right the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to try to use whatever uh string representation this sort of this sort of like like structure uh, has so if it has like a str uh double underscore method it will it will use it uh, so i'm pretty sure we could use it like straight up then we need to, to figure out some sort of separator uh, and I don't know, like, what, what's this, what would be a safe separator in this case? You guys know, like, perhaps like a tilde would be safe in this case to separate the information. Uh, so we have our timestamp. Uh, and uh, second of all, we would need the shape. And then finally, we would need uh, the data type. And then also another separator like this for the bytes, right? And then when we're going to fetch this information from Redis, I'm going to split on our separator first. Uh, so we're going to split like the, the actual, like the actual components. We're going to extract them as separate things and we're going to individually decode them. Uh, except for the, the bytes that, that we're just going to try to use reshape on. All right. So frame bytes cycle start, and then we can use frame frame dot shape. Uh, however, the the string representation of that one is going to be a little uh, little meh. I, I don't think it's going to work out that well. If I have, let's say, a, a, a tuple that has like one through three, like this, like what's what's the string representation of of this? Yeah, it might just be this, but but it's not going to be. It's not ideal, let's just say that. It's not ideal. Uh, I, I would rather probably just join A with some other separator. Doggo is dead. <laughs> yeah, she does that. She loves the, yeah. The sleeping on the back. It, it's it's the first, I won't lie, it's the first sleeping on the back doggo I've had like in my entire life, but she loves to do it. And then the yoga pose, like like stretching a paw like that. It's just fucking funny, man. All right. So what's better? The like joining would probably be better in this case, right? So joining by another separator, and I don't know which one we could use. As long as it's a safe one, I don't really mind. Uh, it could be, it could be. Is there a difference between, uh, well, yes, technically, right? Te well, it's a good question, actually, and I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't want to say like like I think by default it's gonna to try to call that on, on that behind the scenes. But I don't know if there's a difference per se. And that's something we could learn. I think your question like like could could literally be googled like as is, and maybe we'd get some some information. That's a good question. I like it. I, I'm tempted to say it's the same thing, but then again, I could be wrong. Type type of stuff we type of stuff we take for granted, right? Sometimes. Like, I don't know, I, I assume they was just gonna do it, but. Cause I'm pretty sure like on actual types, 
I, I, uh, I'm pretty sure like on actual like 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 native types, it has to do something else than call like the, the double underscore string on it. So I don't know. There there must be a difference in that sense. But I think by default, otherwise, it will try to call it. And if it's not there, uh, maybe in some cases it'll do something else. That's a good question. Yeah, so it's probably better to just like like join it with with some other, um, so like I said, like maybe like a dollar or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Dollar for shape, right? Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Uh, so we can do dollar dot join on on a instead. Uh, what did I fuck up there? Oh yeah, it would be like string of a. God damn. It's a pain in the ass. No, 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 no. It would be string of the items in there. Never. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I would have to map them as fucking hell, dude. It doesn't work like straight up like this. Because they're ints, right? Uh, so I would have to map a... Oh, and then I can't map like a tuple because it's, uh, it's immutable. Well, we have to get it done, but... It's not going to be pretty necessarily. That doesn't matter. At least it hides the uh, the complexity. But I can't really like just shape it. Well, I could always destroy. I could be filthy here. Okay, I could I could definitely be filthy. Uh, there's nothing risky about this. Like not zero. Nothing nothing filthy like risky here. But if I do this right, uh, and I replace. Basically, the brackets, because this the shape is always going to be a tuple with nothing, right? And it's something we can do. Of course, I could use a regular expression. I just don't want to bring in the module just for that. I could be filthy like this, right? And then I do uh, dot split on the comma. Yeah, look at that. Then I would get it as a list, but it doesn't matter because I can get the uh, I could I could get the the items and and just like like I could convert this to a well I would have to do the list comprehension or, or slash the map uh, on the other side if I do it like that. So it's not necessarily like a win or anything. And if I don't do this, then what what you'll see is just this basically right oh i would have been comma space but whatever on the split as long as i'm consistent within my own like my own systems i mean we're gonna be good yeah uh it probably makes it it probably makes a copy then yeah yeah it makes like it makes a copy that's it it just makes a copy then in that case All right, so how do we, uh, am I willing to do this? Let's do frame shape, fuck it. All right, frame shape, and that's gonna be, I'm gonna do it like this and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of the, the parents, I think, that's it. So let's do frame.shape, right? Let's do string, the string representation of that, which is gonna hold the parents. And I'm gonna like just get them out there. Then we're gonna have a comma separated, uh, a comma separated list. Uh, we'll see. And that's good enough for for adding to our to our frame bytes. This and these. Then we're gonna play with this on the other side after that. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then frame underscore shape goes in here. Nice. And then we have the D type that's supposed to go in here. And that should be enough. Uh, and then that, that one is pretty straight up. Uh, I think if you ask for, ask for the D type of an array, it should be... Uh, let's try as 
pi. And if I do whatever C is a NP dot zero zeros two two C and then C dot D type. Okay, it gives me D type load 64. Uh, how can I extract that out? Can I do a string on this thing too? Yeah, there we go. Bingo. All right, so we're going to string the D type of the frame. That's it. So, oh, I might do it. Do I want to take the chance? <laughs> uh, do I want to take the chance here? Because the, the, uh, technically the F string could do it for me. All right, so I could do frame uh, D type just, just to be thorough. Do it outside and say it's also going to be a string of frame. Oops. Frame dot D type like this. And then add just gonna need one line here. And I'm going to add that frame D type right here. And then we're going to append all of this uh, before our, our frame bytes, which, and, and before we used to only have this information here, right? Now we're going to append a bunch of other shit in front and we're going to store frame bytes instead of frame two bytes. Like this. All right. That's number one. Uh, now we need to do it for the pipeline, but it's uh, essentially the same thing. So we're just going to do these two things before. So frame pipeline shape. Now this may end up being the same thing. Uh, depends on if we're applying a pipeline or not. Uh, regardless, in the back end, it doesn't really care. It makes a copy and then just like rolls with it. It does not care. Frame pipeline. Uh, and then we're getting rid of this. We're fine. And then frame pipeline D type. Yes, and then uh, let's copy also this guy. So this one's going to be a little longer, but just because we're adding underscore pipeline to everything. It's going to be frame pipeline bytes. Cycle start is still uh, accurate in this case. We're going to use the same timestamp. It's just a modification of the frame that doesn't change when that frame came into play. Uh, we're going to add the pipeline. Pipeline shape pipeline d type lines getting pretty long but i'm gonna fucking roll with it we're okay with that we're not scared uh frame pipeline got two bytes and that's my frame pipeline bytes and i replace whatever i had in my redis uh out push to frame pipeline bytes and that should be it, man. That should be just change. Like, like at least the change for the writing part of the the frame grabber. Uh, so let's give it a let's give it a try. Let's see if it if it blows up, or if it if it actually works. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this, and also, also, uh, just like perhaps space out. Yeah, give it give it more room like this. Uh, I, I don't think I'm logged into Steam. Please be logged in at least. I don't I don't care about running it, but it needs to be logged in. All right. All right, got a bet. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, it is logged in. Please, thank you. God damn. Good luck with the timestamps. We're gonna be good. It's more than the timestamp. It's it's actually like the shape. I know it's not necessarily exciting, but we're really like messing around with the frame wrapper right now. Sleep well. Welcome back. I know you've been pretty busy on your, your end though. But appreciate paying us a visit. All right, cool. So let's try to run. Well, first of all, I need to build. I'm going to need to build a new egg. So it's going to be pip setup.py install. Just build a new package from uh, our changes to the framework code. And then in here, I can start by saying serpent launch canavault. Mm -hmm. It's gonna launch our game. Uh, it launches the game through Steam, but it also has like there's a like an extra benefit here, right? Uh, it's not just like hey, let's find a, a way to launch a Steam game and that and call it a day. There's actually callbacks, and they actually become pretty useful. 
uh, they're useful because they're useful because like like sometimes you have to bypass a launcher, for example. So in Cannonball's case, it is it is actually uh, the scenario. There's a launcher, and we need to figure out how to bypass it. So it's not just a matter like getting your game running might not just be a matter of launching it from Steam, right? There might be a launcher. Uh, you might have to skip like like some some intro screen or whatever. Uh, and you can do that in your callbacks when you do the game launching, right? I just realized, oh, there's an imager link. I need to go and look at that. Ah! <laughs> Dude, it, it keeps happening. It keeps happening to me like so much. And I don't know. Uh, it, 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 I've never had that, that problem with Twitch before. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chat too. Uh, but I've started getting this issue uh, on on the new Twitch, where I just fall behind, like big time on, on streams. I've never had that problem before, like like with the older Twitch that was not, uh, I guess the HTML5 or the React whatever um, Twitch. But now I'm falling behind. I'm watching streams, and all of a sudden I realize that that my 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 chat like my memeing is not on point, and I check the latency to broadcaster, and I'm just like fuck. I'm like like. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like like five, four minutes behind. Sometimes even worse. Uh, and I don't know why it happens, but it's really infuriating. Like I, I, I don't get it. And uh, maybe, maybe a good time to check <laughs> right now if you're not like like literally minutes behind. Uh, maybe just like a, a quick refresh or something might might tell you a little more. All right. So no, my goal right now is to test my frame grabbing. So where I am in the game doesn't really matter that much. Uh, what I'm going to do is serpent capture. Uh, what are we going to do? Capture frame, of course, uh, in Cannabalt. Cannablot. Cannabalt. And every one second. And that's going to use our new code for the frame grabber. Now it's not going to be able to... Uh, it's going to fuck up, most likely, with a reshape error. But but it, it should still work capture wise from string, right? So this is where I wanted it to fuck up basically, because it's on the reading end, it's not on the writing end. It's when I ask the frame grabber for uh, a frame or a series of frames uh, that it's that it's messing up. Uh, so what does that does tell me in, in a sense is that whatever's in memory right now, uh, well, it got written. I don't think there's an error in our in our writing. Uh, and we can go to Redis perhaps to try it. I just I would just need to figure out the key for this. Uh, so in Redis CLI, let me just zoom in on this thing. Come on. Are you kidding? There we go. All right, so I'm in Redis CLI. Uh, I need to figure out my key. Just give me a sec. I need to figure out the key uh, under which I store these frames. Uh, it must it must be something super simple like serpent frames. Uh, I just need to confer confirm. Confirm, just give me a sec here and in where's config for this guy? Config. I was gonna say like there's probably some sensitive information to rip. <laughs> now it's serpent frames, actually pretty simple, right? So let's do serpent uh, frames and ask like for, for example how many frames do I have in there? I probably have like very little, uh, except that we did add this blocking thing uh, last time until the buffer is full. So I might have like 150. Yeah, we have 150. We're good. We're good. All right. So if I were to just like get this, like this guy, I want to visualize our, our additions that we had, like that we added, like the timestamp, the shape and the D type. I want to visualize them. And since I put them at the start, uh, if I were to ask for L index, right, the list index of serpent frame zero, Make the first one in there. Uh, I should be able to visualize the bytes. There's a there's a bunch of garbage in there, but hopefully it's not too big, and I can uh, I can see what's up. Seems like a lot of filler in there. But then again, a lot of filler makes sense because it's bitmaps, right? And this is sort of grayscale-ish, so there's a good chance that the values are just like identical. Uh, I think this is too big. I, I don't think I'll just get to see the the top <laughs> the top bytes, unfortunately. 
Not in T-Mux, at least. I could try it again outside of T-Mux and have, like, forever scroll back. Uh, I don't think this exercise is, is really going to pan out uh, inside of T-Mux because there's a limit to my to my buffer uh, scroll back. And I'm about to reach it. So unless we're about to see... Nope. No bueno. All right, cool. So let's go... Let's just detach from Tmux for a sec. Just do Redis CLI again. And then do L index serpent. Oops. Frames. Zero. Boom. All right, and then I can just like scroll freely. It's still going to be a pain in the ass to get up there, but... Oh, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> It does it does exhaust the, the scroll back even outside of Tmux and it's way bigger outside of Tmux and it's still too much. Ah Alright, let's see if there's a preference to just make it back to live. <laughs> Alright, let's see if there's a way to make it uh Goodbye now. Alright, sleep well dude. Good luck with your uh boot camp experience <laughs> it might not be here it might be in the uh, profile stuff but i really need it to uh not exhaust its uh scroll back scrolling limit scroll back to can i just like disable this shit i know it's bad for memory yeah but this is inside of a it, it, that's inside of the the Redis client. Uh, I'm I'm working inside the Redis client. I'm not working from the the command line. Uh, however, I think you can launch like you can run this. I can also like optionally just disable this. This is horrible for memory, by the way. Like I, like I said, like just don't do it. Uh, don't do it. I should have probably cleared before it did anything like this because now i'm not gonna find oh i did see it don't fucking is this linux yes it is yes it is yes it is there is a command for this for the uh os stuff there you go i did see it ah, it's fucking with me i did see the beginning of the All right, fuck it. Let's just do it the other way. Uh, with with Redis, there's a way to do to run a command. You can do Redis CLI. Uh, it's dash C, and then you can just like run whatever command you want. Something like this. Serpent frames zero, and then uh, we just like oops, pass that to like head. I don't want to necessarily tail it, but it could be like even like five lines would be enough. Fuck. <laughs> All right, that's that's probably not with the double quotes in that case. Maybe. Okay, so it worked, but it didn't work. <laughs> I guess it's because it's a single line, so I don't think head is gonna. Yeah. And five? Okay, wait. Nope. Because it's, uh, because it's, uh, it's still, well, even if it was just C, it would still have worked. No, it, it's, it, it just gives the entire fucking output. It doesn't give a shit. It does not care. So one thing I can do is just like clear and go inside of, even though clear is, is, not really the way to do it. Just make a huge gap like this. And I mean, I could I could go back to my Redis command line. Uh, L index zero, let's go. The goal being to see uh, the gap that I introduced there we 
There you go. It only took forever. <laughs> it only took forever. Uh, but there you go. Right? There you go. Before we start having our frame bytes, uh, we have we have a timestamp with my, like more than microsecond precision. Uh, and, and we have a comma space separated shape. And we also have our type, uint, and then it proceeds to list the byte. So the writing part did work, right? That's, that's the important thing. It did work. The writing part did work. Uh, now we have to figure out the reading. Like we have to deconstruct it on the other, well, reconstruct it, sorry, on the other end based on that information, right? It's not too bad because we're still working the frame grabber. And the frame grabber has this, uh, this class method called get frames that will pull uh, stuff using L index, literally, like I was doing. Right? We'll just pull stuff out. Uh, but now instead of just trying to reshape this into a NumPy array, uh, we have to split it first in multiple components and then use these components that we're extracting to make the, the, NumPy, uh, the NumPy array. Uh, so let's, let's try to work with that. I uh, should be able to complete this today without a problem. Let's also keep an eye on our TensorFlow compilation. Come on. Are you? I, 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 I. Oh, I'm not in Tmux. That's why. <laughs> like, what's going on? No, we did quit Tmux to see the information. Uh, I, I would need to reattach and then do Control V3. Build successful. <laughs> It did not take four hours. Like people were bullshitting. Uh, it did not take us. It did not take us. Uh, it, it took us like slightly over an hour is what it took us to build TensorFlow uh, from from source. So I don't know why people were saying it was going to take three to four hours. That seems to be bullshit. So we did manage to successfully build TensorFlow against CUDA 9.1. I'm probably going to be trying to use it tomorrow. I want to finish what we're doing right now today. Like the whole reading, the new information that we're appending to our frames. Uh, that's that's kind of exciting in a way. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it's cool that we're going to have that information now. All right. So get frames. This is where we need to focus for now on. From now on. So how does get frame uh, works? How does how does it work? Now how does it works? I'm tired. Uh, like I said, like we're going to get rid of frame shape because we don't need that anymore. We can infer it from the information that is going to be tacked along with the bytes. And we don't need the data type anymore. So let's, uh, whoop, let's get that out. Uh, so it's going to look like it's, ma it's making things more complicated than get frames, right? But that's fine. This is where we want it to be a little more complicated because when, when people get to use it now, they don't have to know, right? They don't have to know like the shape and the data type. And it used to be a pain in the ass. There's so much code we're going to be able to get rid of uh, because of this, this refactor right here. It used to be a pain in the ass to like always know, oh yeah, I'm probably using the pipeline right now. And the pipeline does contain a pipe to float. So it should be float 64, a bunch of logic like that everywhere just to determine the right shape and, uh, and you know, like, like a data type. So now we're going to be able to hide that complexity like, like in here so that people don't have to know even when they're consuming stuff. They, all they have to say is, I want these frames from the buffer, like a bunch of indices, and I want them to be the full res frame or the pipeline frame. And that's it, that's it. All right, so while true, uh, blah, 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 all right. So we, this is the block that we added last time, I think. Uh, we wanna make sure that the buffer is full. I don't think I'm gonna change that. I think that's useful. Uh, so we don't, uh, we don't really return anything from here until we have a full buffer. There you go. Uh, and then we initialize a game frame buffer of a certain size. That's one of our own structures. Uh, and then we start working on these indices. And like I said, it's actually pretty fun because I am using L index exactly like I was doing myself in, in Redis, right? I was doing that myself in Redis. I was just using L index of the key with the, the index. I'm using the indices that people pass in, uh, in here, and I'm doing the same thing. And for every one of these indices, we're gonna fetch the, the, the value in there. We're gonna fetch the value in there. And if it's a pipeline uh, type, then we uh, have to append underscore pipeline to our key. That's fine. And then frame bytes, and this is where we we're gonna have to change our stuff. Uh, this is not like frame bytes anymore or anything. Uh, well, it, it sort of is, but, but we have to, 
split this. We have to split this on our on our tilde and, and see what the different uh, components are. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have that information anymore. We need to infer it from that. So I'm I'm expecting stuff to show up in here between these two things. Uh, and I probably don't want to call that frame bytes anymore. Uh, we could say frame data. That's a little more generic. Uh, we're using a Redis line to perform the L index with the key uh, and the index. That's cool. That's going to give us all the bytes back, exactly like we got from uh, in our client, like in our command line, like stuff like this. Can we give us a bunch of bytes like this? And then it's up to us to, to, to work with that, right? Uh, so I don't know if we're going to be able to split on the tilde without decoding, uh, but probably. Let's start with that. Let's start with that. Let's say uh, timestamp. Let's just do a like an extraction like this. Let's do timestamp shape uh, D type and uh, what was it like frame data uh, or frame bytes are going to be me using frame data dot split on the tilde now like i said i don't know i don't know if i need to if it's going to work on the bytes themselves but i think we did see the tilde in the bytes without any sort of like uh encoding uh, so it should work and i think the tilde is part of the uh the basic uh, character set so that should that should work and let's just do print timestamp for now like just to make sure that first of all there's no error in in extracting these four items from the frame data and as a test just print out one of the, the values and then i could i could literally uh, the problem is if i if i do try to like crash this thing uh it's gonna crash the process of the frame grabber but it's not gonna crash like anything else so let's see what happens like what happens if we do this it's probably not good <laughs> You will see the crash like in 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 the output, but it's not going to crash my my actual command uh, itself because it's the 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 other process that's crashing. There's two processes always: my game agent or command, and there's the frame grabber, right? Yeah. Uh, we could probably split it. Uh, we can probably. Well, it depends on how it does it, but yeah, it doesn't really tell it, right? So maybe we could make a a slice. Yeah, split seems like a bad idea. So what, padding instead? Per, well, yeah, maybe padding would be better. So we just like give it like enough room. So we pad all these values to, to something like reasonable. That's another option. And then I can just slice away manually uh, and, then, and then strip away the, the white space. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you're 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 correct that it would be slow. I still want to try it, but I think you're right that it would be like really really slow, especially if the data is like this big. Depends on on how I like overall like like fast or slow that thing is, but it was definitely favorable to use the full thing like as is uh, as we were doing before for sure. Uh, so split is probably not exactly like a, a good idea. You're right. Uh, let's try that again. How with that being said, I just want to see it like like work. And then if it's too slow, then we'll uh, try to just uh, padded, padded strings. That, yeah, that's the yeah that's rebuilding the this, and then we're gonna try this here. Uh, get frames got oh yeah shit because we're still. Mm. I should probably capture uh, whatever extras right now under uh, keyword arts because all of our code is still using it the, the, the old way where you have to specify the old stuff. So I, I guess I need to tolerate, in a, in a sense, tolerate these, uh, these keyword args even though I don't want to use them anymore. Why did it get multiple values for frame type and where? 
game frame buffer that would be in grab latest frame and it's passing oh it's passing them as non-named fucking hell <laughs> frame shape is not a named one for some reason so it was not named that's a little weird it might have been it might have been named and uh i just uh let's try to correct that one so let's go to No, but I, like using padded strings would be even faster than that. I could just like allocate a bunch of a bunch of room. I could just use a bunch of room, right, for everything, and then just strip away the white space, and that would that would also be uh, probably the the fastest because I could just know exactly what's the max allocation, and then uh, and then just like strip away the white space. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing for for speed, but I still want to get it working uh, before that. So it's mostly this here. Uh, is that the grab latest frame? It is, it is. And uh, I think if I do this, it would at least tolerate it at a minimum. I just want to see that timestamp right now. I don't care about the speed. I don't care about anything. I just want to make sure it's able to split regardless of the amount of time it takes. And then we can optimize the speed. Go back on, on the writing end and then optimize the way we we do that stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna think it's it's actually really, really slow. Uh aha! Where was that? It says a bytes like object is required, not string. Seems a little odd. really on that split ah, 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 ah wait 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 yeah because it I am using the split on bytes and not on string and I'm passing the, the the tilde as a string so there's a chance that it wants me to do there's there's a chance that it wants me to use a uh, encode on that uh, so that it's, it's comparing bytes to bytes yeah yeah max split i've never i've never used that that's interesting so it would stop the second it's it's done this amount of splits that's cool learning a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff That would be perfect because it has to split like that's even better because it's it makes it simple i don't have to do all the padding bullshit and uh name frame okay that might be good that might be good though i might have my timestamp at this point yeah look at that look at this bad boy all right so we can do the split that works uh we have to compare bytes with bytes so i have to split on a on an encoded utfa tilde uh, and apparently we can use, and we can test this and it should make it faster. Is it max splits? Let me try to find, oh, I did use an underscore, there's no underscore. And I'm not expecting even uh, Visual Studio Code to pick up on that. Let's go and look up uh, Python three split. I mean, padding is safe too, and it's fast, but it's just like I, I, if I can't avoid padding for minimal performance loss, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother, you know. Where's the split? Max split. There you go. All right. So where do we talk about max? Uh, if max split is given, uh, let's remove the search because it's kind of in the way. If max split is given, at most max split splits are done. 
Uh, perfect. Sounds pretty good to me. It means that it's going to stop when it gets to our frame and it's just, just going to return. So it's going to be way faster. Now, are we splitting four times or three times? Uh, are they talking about... Are they talking about the amount of times like we encounter the split character? Let's go in back and, and see. Yeah, it's the amount of, of split characters. And in our case, it would be three then, not four. All right, so, so we'll encounter the tilde one, uh, that's our timestamp, two, that's our shape. And then a third time between the, uh, yeah, it's gonna be three. But still, very, very cool suggestion. I, I never really saw Max Split. Not because I guess I never really had an, an, uh, an actual use case for this guy. I rarely like work with split on huge structures like this. Uh, but that's cool that it's there. It, it can cause it to just decide to abort uh, or, or interrupt the splitting. Let's try that again. And then, of course, it's going to fuck up uh, because we haven't really like extracted, like work with our extracted stuff. Uh, but let's try to see. Can we can we print out additional stuff before we crash this time around? Like maybe the shape and the D type, and we're not going to bother printing out the frame bytes. This is going to be ridiculous. Let's try that. Uh, rebuild our egg. And start capturing frames from the game. All right, you do your crashing thingy now, it's fine. I just wanna see my prints, really. It's all good. Ah, there we go. I, I'd say we're in a good position now. <laughs> I'd say we're in a decent position, what do you think? What do you think, chat? We're in a pretty decent position. We have our timestamp, we have our shape that we can split on the comma space, and we have float 64. Uh, that's pretty freaking neat. Pretty friggin' neat. And of course, the other the other part would be the, the frame itself, uh, the bytes that compose the frames. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now we're gonna have to work with this because they're bytes, right? So uh, first of all, the timestamp, we're gonna need to tweak our game frame to accept a timestamp. Uh, timestamp, like, like I guess, like, like keyword arg when we initialize the, uh, the instance of a game frame. Because uh, that's not... That's not really like supported right now. And that's where it should lie, right? We have this wrapper and I think it's cool that we have the wrapper around the, the NumPy array itself. Uh, and then we should be able to pass uh, on top of that, we should be able to pass an optional timestamp, right? And that would be timestamp. I guess it's the float of string of, I don't know if float takes bytes, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's try it. Let's try it to see if float takes bytes. Like, let's take a second to just verify. It's gonna. It's probably like as long to verify here than it is to. Uh, so let's do float of one point blah 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 like this, and let's make sure that we encode this to uh, true uh, or with UTF-8, and then try to use float on it. It works, right? So we can pass bytes like straight up. Nice. So forget the str. Uh, and so timestamp is going to be the float of timestamp here. So we're using uh, timestamp that's that's been used. However, this guy does not support that right now. Uh, however, supporting it is, is kind of really dumb. Uh, all we have to do is accept that as part of our, you know, as part of our uh, keyword args. We can just do timestamp and. Uh, Say whatever, like none by default, and then pass. Say that uh, self that time stamp 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 <laughs> time stamp is going to be uh, time stamp, and then if it's none, it's none. Whatever, and if it's there, it's there. Of course, like this is a this is not like a statically typed language, uh, so you have to use some some sort of level of trust in here that whatever you're going to get. Uh, well, it's gonna use the, the correct type, right? Um, 
but I'm mostly controlling like like the use of game frame. People could create their own game frame, uh, but they, they'd likely not even be aware of a timestamp. And if they are, uh, I'd say most people would inquire as to how it works. We're not using this in a critical part of our code anywhere. So it's just like extra information that's there as almost as a property at this point, right? So yes, it is stored as an instance variable, but it, it's almost like a property, right? And uh, we're just using that. We're just passing that along when we create our game frame um, object. So that's number one. We're using timestamp, that's cool. We're gonna go back to a frame grabber. What's the next one? The shape, that's pretty important, right? So how do we how do we work with the shape? Uh, we work with the shape, like we did see it was a comma space separated list of, of digits and it doesn't, it, it's not necessarily, uh, it, it was not necessarily like, like the same size, right? So it could be like two dimensional, three dimensional. Uh, so it could have two or three values. Uh, and uh, we're, we're looking to reshape using frame shape here. So let's start working on generating that frame shape variable that we're looking to use uh, here. Uh, and how do we do this? Well, we have to first use that shape. Uh, we could decode it straight up. There's, a, there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, we could decode it straight up and then split on the comma space. And that's gonna give me uh, an array or a list in Python of, of strings. And then I would have to map that to, uh, to actual integers and make it a tuple. I, I, maybe we can pass a list. Uh, that would save uh, one conversion or one cast. Uh, so let's do this split on uh, comma space like this, that's gonna give me an array with, with whatever values as, as strings. Uh, but then we have to also convert them to a, so we're gonna use a list comp uh, if it's not too big, convert them to integers, right? Uh, let's say for whatever I in, it's, it's just like items or integers really like in, in the making uh, in this. And then we'll do int of i. And let's hope that we can use frame shape like this and that it would work. And then dtype is also pretty easy. dtype is technically the dtype that we're extracting here, uh, except that we decode it as a string too. So we decode the bytes with dtf8. And that should work. That, that, that means that we have our bytes that are not decoded, uh, our frame type or D type, we have it. And then our reshape, we just figured it out with this. Uh, as long as reshape accepts the Python list. And because uh, normally it's it, we're working with tuples, but it, it might just like accept it nonetheless. Let's try that one. And then if this works, uh, if I actually rebuild the egg here and, and the capture starts working, uh, then we'll be looking pretty good to have all this extra information here. Uh, that's gonna allow me to clean up a bunch of code, which we'll probably be do tomorrow uh, to start the day with. So tomorrow we'll definitely uh, try to switch to use uh, our successfully compiled TensorFlow 1.50 RC1 with CUDA 9.1. We'll try to make that work uh, in, in Serpent AI. Uh, we'll also try to clean up the code everywhere that was using get frames and was trying to determine the shape and everything. We'll be able to clean that up uh, all throughout the framework. So that's kind of cool. Um, but for now, uh, let me go and clean up uh, the, the collected frames. Uh, so in uh, Serpent AI, I'm just gonna open it like this. Data sets, collect frames. Let's empty this for now. And that's how we're gonna be able to verify that it actually works. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did rebuild the egg. I'm just gonna be paranoid and redo it again, just in case. And then here, I'm able to run Serpent Capture Frame on Cannibal, everyone. Uh, okay, cool, invalid syntax. How did I manage to fuck this one up? Uh, that's where? That's in Frame Grabber 139. Am I missing a, yes I am. How did I fuck this one up? It's definitely missing a parens here. So it gets the bytes, it gets the D type. 
Okay, so it's here. Something like this. I think. All right, let's get it capturing some frames. How about that? Here we go. There we go. Now, now we're good. Look at that shit, chat. Pretty good. Now it's collecting the frames. Uh, so it, it is now uh, storing a timestamp. Uh, and it figures out its own shape and D-type uh, from the information that we appended at right time. Uh, it's able to, so we don't have to pass that anymore, right? It's able to just like figure it out on its own. So that reshape error that we had, like we're not likely to see that a whole lot in the future. Of course, now I'm going to have to clean up everywhere that I was using get frame in the framework to not pass this extra information. And all the code that was there before, right? Now I'm going to be able to just like get rid of it. Because uh, it can figure out its own D-type and shape from there. Uh, and if I focus out of the game, this is where it's going to start writing the images to disk. It's done. And then I go here. And here we fucking go. Now we have like actual frames. Uh, why are they small like this? Because it's using pipeline by default. When you're capturing frames, it uses the pipeline. And the pipeline that we have defined for Cannabalt is 100 by 100 grayscale. So this is what you end up getting. Right? That's it. We'll miss it. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. That's pretty cool, right? So that was not too bad. That was not too bad. So it, it started kind of iffy today, but we have a successful compilation of TensorFlow 1.5. And we just did a pretty interesting uh, refactor in the frame grabber. Uh, so let's just work with the recording for a second, which is where we started. Because the goal was not to refactor the frame grabbing or anything, uh, but we ended up doing it. Uh, now, if you go back to what sparked this refactor, it, it was working in uh, that handle uh, record here. And, and and I was looking at this thing, that stuff, right? All of this, all of this code, we can now get rid of, right? So that's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I won't lie, that's pretty fucking awesome. Now, all of this, like, hey, let, let's look at the blah, 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 blah. No, we don't care. We don't care. Like we have to say, like if there's a tran transformation pipeline, whatever. No, the frame grabber uh, is able to infer the types and reshape correctly, All right? Uh, and if you don't believe me, let's try to get that running as as one of the last things for today. And I say one of the last things for today because well, it's almost been four hours. I try to keep my my weekday ones to four hours, but there's also an event or or a, like a, a thing I want to see on Twitch uh, that's live right now. Um, Scalius, one of our uh, team members, pretty involved team members in Brain Bites, is having a guest over on our stream tonight, and it's a, it's a, uh, it's actually like a, I think he's an astrophysicist that's that does uh, machine learning uh, to discover exoplanets. Uh, so you can kind of understand why I'd want to see that, uh, and I think the guest is on right now. So I don't want to stretch it too long, and we're definitely going to go over there, and I want to watch that. I think it's super interesting to see how they use machine learning to uh discover potential new exoplanets in space <laughs> right so uh, i'm gonna try to perhaps like just get rid of this um maybe you could just get rid of this for now i would the stream would have been longer for sure but it might have started too late today uh but i'll be there tomorrow we'll, we're gonna keep working on this but for now let's try to see like like celebrate or win here let's get rid of all that shit all that shit uh and we're getting rid of the frame shape and I'm asking for pipeline. That's cool. And we don't need to give D-type anymore. Uh, and if I do that, of course, we didn't really refactor how the recording works for now. Uh, but but that should simplify the handle record like quite a bit. So let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Hopefully the guest is not going to be gone by the time I host. Like it, it was supposed. What time is it right now? It might have been a half an hour already. Uh, so we'll try to keep it short. We'll try to like like go over there as soon as possible because I really want to see it myself and, and preferably not through the VOD. Um, I love it when she has uh, guests over. So if you don't know who she is, like I said, she's part of the team, uh, the Brain Bites team. So if you, you know, just scroll below the, uh, uh, the the feed, if you're on, on the desktop, uh, you'll see uh, you'll see that I'm actually part of a Twitch team. Uh, she does astronomy stuff. It's pretty cool. 
uh, and she has guests like that once in a while. Okay, so cool. Let's try to switch over to using, let's try to use uh, Serpent uh, Corb in Cannabalt. Cannabalt. Yeah. Yeah, I will host for sure. I will host. I will definitely host. I just want to test this one last thing, and then we're gonna we're gonna call it a day and then uh, host that event, and um, and then uh, we'll continue this tomorrow, probably for a little longer than four hours tomorrow. All right. So sudo serpent record cannabalt using serpent cannabalt game agent. If it fucks up, then we'll just like fix it first thing tomorrow. But I'm expecting this uh, to sort of work. It's gonna take a while to initialize. That's always the case. That's fine, especially since we now f ensure the buffer is filled before. Uh... So we have a five second buffer, and it won't do anything. Okay, that was pretty aggressive. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. It seems to be lagging a bit. It doesn't crash, which is awesome, right? It's awesome that it doesn't crash. But it seems to be lagging a bit. And it might be because I'm asking for too many uh, frames per second. And maybe this is why I had the FPS so low. Uh, anyhow, we'll revise that tomorrow. I'm going to definitely commit this code to, to GitHub like, like while I'm not streaming. Uh, and for now, like I said, let's go and, and see what's up with that. So hopefully uh, there's a bunch of interesting stuff today. Like we talked about the learning uh, rate, machine learning wise. We did try to install uh, or compile TensorFlow uh, pretty much from source on, on Antergos, which is an Arch-based uh, OS. And then we started working on, on that refactor uh, for the recording that led to the refactor of the frames. And uh, we got that as a result. Now, if I go here, uh, for, for what's left of today. And uh, like I said, if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a team. There's a team here, right? Team here. Uh, it, it always does that. And then there's Kyle. Kyle, yes, is there right now. And she has the guest on. So we're going to go right there. Uh, you don't have to like like spam emotes and shit like because when she has a guest, like she, she tries to keep it a little more formal. Uh, but I think the material is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, so if you want to go over there and, and, and give it a listen, like I said, once again, it's a guest that's going to talk about like exoplanets and, and partly how they use machine learning to discover new ones. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to chill in there, uh, for like while I make dinner. Uh, so if you want to chill in that chat, well, you're welcome to go there. Otherwise I'll be, I'll be back tomorrow and, uh, I'll, I'll see you then. All right. So thanks for hanging.